from Aggie Memorial Stadium in Las Cruces, the Red Hot Georgia Southern Eagles are in town this afternoon. It's an afternoon non-conference tilt with the Aggies of New Mexico State. NM State comes in 2-5. and five. They're coming off a tough defensive outing last week at Louisiana, but the Aggies' offense has been very good. They're averaging 38 points per game in the three starts for Josh Atkins. Meanwhile, Georgia Southern 5-1, and one, one win away from bowl eligibility, and their defense has been fantastic the entire year. Hello again, everyone, along with former Aggie Danny Nee, Adam Young with you. Great to have you with us this afternoon. Well, the Aggies coming off a tough 66-38 loss last week at Louisiana. Bad news is the defense struggled. Good news is the offense was matching scores. Yeah, it seems like we just kind of switched roles here recently, but the offense is firing all, all cylinders, and they're going to need to tonight in order for the Aggies to pick up a win. How about Jason Huntley last week for NM State? 373 all-purpose yards, the most by a player this year at the FBS. Yeah, number one, Jason Huntley had a great game. The 5'9 junior from Arlington, Texas, is coming off his best game, as you said. 85 yards receiving, 112 rushing, one TD, 100. 76 kick returning yards. He is on a roll. Georgia Southern's offense will feature a triple option attack led by quarterback Shy Wirtz. Shy Wirtz is having a great year. The sophomore QB from Clinton, South Carolina, has uh, thrown for 414 yards, four TDs, no interceptions yet. He rushes for eight TDs. He counts for 12 TDs for Georgia Southern. He's going to be the one we need to stop tonight. Georgia Southern likes to run the football. They average 257 yards per game on the ground. The Aggies need to find a way. They need to stop the run today. Yeah, you know, as coach said, we got exposed in a couple areas last week. So let's see if the coaches clean that up. The nice thing is every week you get a new start. This is a new game, a new start. Let's see what we got. NM State looks for win number three. Georgia Southern looks for bowl eligibility. Sponsored by New Mexico's Agricultural Community. Kickoff comes your way next. Welcome back to Aggie Memorial Stadium in Windy, Las Cruces, New Mexico. It is Ag Day here at Aggie Memorial. The Aggies looking for their third win this year. Georgia Southern trying to move to six and one and reach bowl eligibility just seven games in. They're having one heck of a year. Their only loss came to Clemson. The Aggies coming off a loss last week at Louisiana. Well, as we mentioned, it is windy today. It's also a little cool. It's been a little chilly in Las Cruces this week. It was low 50s early in the week. It is 71 right now. Look at the wind, 60 miles per hour, which is not unusual for the Southwest, but probably something Georgia Southern doesn't see a whole lot of uh, this wind that they will deal with today. The wind is blowing from the south end zone to the north end zone uh, here at Aggie Memorial Stadium. All right, Danny, your keys to the game. Well, here's how I see it working out today, Adam. I see from a scoring perspective, I think we need to score 30 or more. I think Coach Martin had a goal of 30. We've, we've averaged 43.5 points per game the last two games. We're, we're hitting on all cylinders. Everything is working. Josh is making great decisions. We're going to have to post some big numbers, and so it's 30 or more. Defense, you got to get back to where we were physical football against Liberty. We were gang tackling. We had guys flying around the ball, playing with emotion. You know, we're getting off the field in third down. We need to do that and win on defense. And the last one is, hey, you got to stuff that option. If you do not, it could be a long day. Doug Martin is the head coach of New Mexico State, and uh, the Aggies had won two straight games before last week. So his message to his guys this week is we need to start a new win streak. There you see the year and also the numbers for Doug Martin. The Aggies coming off a bowl win last year in the Arizona Bowl. First bowl game for this program in 57 years. And the Aggies will need to finish strong to reach bowl eligibility again this year. Doug Martin looking for his 20th win as the head coach of this Aggie football program. And on the other sideline, it is newcomer Chad Lunsford, who is in his first full year as the head coach of Georgia Southern. He took over last year as the interim nice head coach, finished good. strong. Georgia Southern was 0-6 in their first six games last year. Chad Lunsford took over. He went 2-4. The interim tag was removed late during the course of last season. He got the full-time job, and boy, what a turnaround it has been. Georgia Southern back to their old tricks. They're coming off back-to-back -back losing seasons for the first time in the modern era. They're not going to have a losing season this year. This could be one of the better seasons in program history for Georgia Southern. 
Danny, this would be a big win if the Yankees can find a way to get it today. Yeah, they need to get this uh, ship righted, if you will, and figure out how to get back on this winning streak. Last week just fell apart defensively. Offensively, great, man. We're coming together, and defensively it just all kind of fell apart. As Coach says, things were exposed. Well, we'll see how much uh, we've covered up that exposed pieces uh, today. Well, the Aggies will start with the football first as Tyler Bass and Georgia Southern will kick off to the Aggies. Watch out for Jason Huntley back deep. He has three kick return touchdowns in his previous 11, but with the wind behind the kick, the Aggies uh, will watch it go through the end zone. They will start on the 25 on the touchback, and we will see Josh Atkins, who's been a winner so far this year. Uh, Danny, he is 2-1 and one as a starter. The Aggies averaging 38 per game in his three starts. And, you know, Coach said he, he likes the decisions that Josh is making in that. You know, I never realized how important a good quarterback was to the success of a program to the last few games. Josh has made some great decisions, and so he's really uh, got this program turning in the right direction. The Aggies are matching scores with Louisiana last week. Atkins threw for 284. He threw for 402 two weeks ago in the last home game against Liberty. In the backfield is Huntley Atkins throws on a first down. And the pass is caught up near the 30-yard line by Jonathan Boone, the redshirt senior from Orlando. Yeah, Jonathan Boone's having a, a great, great uh, year. He's coming alive here in the last few games. You know, the last game that I watched where Georgia Southern was playing Texas State, I, I did see some areas that you could throw the ball. The, the middle was open, so I'd look to the Yaks to see if they can get something across the middle. Here's a dump off to Huntley, who is so dangerous in the passing game, Danny, and he gets a first down up near the 35-yard line. They're going to mark it at the 36. So Huntley gets the first down, and the Aggies moving the ball well early. Yeah, and this is the staple of our offense, right? The little bubble screen and the quick screen, and the whole object is to get Huntley to the outside. He's a fast guy. He can put up big numbers like we talked about in the open. That is catch number 27 this year for the running back, Huntley. Play action to Jason Huntley. Cuts back to his right. He's across the 40. Big gain for Huntley on first down. Those dump-offs do well for the Aggies because Huntley's a burner, Danny. He is a burner, but you know the other thing about that is that you have to get some, some good blocks at the point of attack. We saw uh, Christian, we saw Gibson out there getting a block. I think that's part of it as well. Get the ball out quickly, get it in the hands, pick up a block or two. Huntley got seven, so it's second down and three. This is Huntley, the ball carrier. Huntley has a first down and more across midfield. The Aggies will use three different running backs. Huntley, Royce Caldwell, and Christian Gibson, who is emerging with five touchdowns in his previous two. Now here you come, you see uh, Christian bouncing one to the offside, and if it wasn't for Joshua Moon coming in here and grabbing a shoelace, he might have cut that back across the field and had a huge game out of that. The Aggies into Georgia Southern Territory. Quick strike to Boone, his second catch, and he is swarmed by four white jersey. Southern Georgia Southern dealing with some injuries. Rashad Bird, middle linebacker, is out with a hip flexor. Sean Freeman, a strong safety, is out with an ankle injury. Yeah, you know, I don't look to slow that, those injuries to slow Georgia, Georgia Southern down at all. I think they're going to be very aggressive, both offensively and defensively today. Running back in Gibson. In motion is Anthony Muse. Back to pass. Underneath. Caught. That is Caleb Mills, his first catch as an Aggie. How about that? We talked about Caleb Mills, you and I did before the games. Like, where's Caleb been? We need to get him in there. We've heard about Caleb and what a great asset he is going to be for the Aggie. There he is crossing across the middle. We talked about the middle being an area I, I see as a big uh, opening for us. There's Caleb picking up a great catch across the middle. Seems like we talk about him every single week, Danny, and finally he sees some action and is able to give the Aggies something on the field. Pass is complete to Bryce Roberts, the tight end, who's been active. At least one catch now in four straight games for Bryce. Yeah, that's a great catch for Bryce right there. He kind of had a little curl, quick curl. He turned around as Josh was scanning the field. Not a lot you can do with it. You can kind of see him check down all the way over there. Bryce is open. Big guy, big target. Hits him perfectly. Muse in motion again. The Yankees got three on the pass and catch to Roberts. On the ground to Gibson, who lowers his shoulder. And... That's where he brings a new dimension, Danny. He's a different back than Huntley and also Caldwell. Yeah, I think he's a complimentary back, no doubt about it, because he will pour it in there. He will square the shoulders, and he will go north and south and fight for every yard that he gets. And uh, that was just an example right there. Just turn your shoulders and go. Here's a big third down and two. The Aggies going with tempo on this opening possession. 
Five out wide, empty backfield for the redshirt freshman, Josh Atkins. Design keeper, first down and more for Atkins. Atkins, first in goal for the Aggies. I like it. Here's what happens when you get a good quarterback that can run and throw the ball. You come out with five wides. You have no one in the backfield. Everyone's on the line of scrimmage, and all you have to do is create one crease, and Josh just poured it in there, and I like that he just kept going for every single yard there. He just didn't fall down. Back to the ground for Christian Gibson, and he will spin his way into the end zone. Six touchdowns in his previous three. You know, Christian Gibson, he's a hard runner. We had a, had the opportunity that uh, my wife and I uh, visited with his parents on a flight back to Dallas after the last game. His parents were super nice people, and I was very complimentary saying, man, Christian is just the hardest runner, and he does so good, and he's just on and on trying to give him good compliments. And they were very, very uh, calm about it and said, well, thank you very much. They were so polite. But you know what? There's nothing polite about the way he pours it in there on that touchdown. He just squares his shoulders, and he goes. An impressive opening drive for the Aggies results in a five-yard rushing touchdown for Gibson. Kicking into the wind is Brown, and he banks through the point after 10 plays, 75 yards, 3 minutes, 32 seconds. Efficiency there for the Aggies, Danny. Yeah, efficiencies. And what, and what was one of the uh, big stats that you said, hey, here's a stat of the day that we were <laughs> bantering back and forth. I think we came out and have a great stat ourselves and a long drive and being able to get one across the end zone. Yeah, how about this? So before this game, Georgia Southern in their first six games had only allowed three first quarter points the entire year. The Aggies score a touchdown, the first first quarter touchdown yeah. Georgia Southern has allowed all year. Yeah, in last week, Texas State um, drove down the field and just couldn't convert when they were down to the one or two yard line there and turned it over on downs and Georgia Southern took control of the game and ended up winning it, a close one, uh, but uh, Texas State couldn't do it, and so the Aggies come out, march one down the field. It was a great stat of the day, like you said, but it's nice that the Aggies can put some points on the board and kind of crush that stat. That was quick. 7-0 Aggies. Dylan Brown will kick off to Georgia Southern. Brown, a junior from Chandler, Arizona. This will be interesting because Brown is kicking into the wind, so he's going to squib it. And it's going to be returnable for Georgia Southern. This is Wesley Kennedy, the dangerous slot receiver who does so many things well for Georgia Southern. And he's going to be shy of the 30. And that's where the Eagles offense will begin. Now, there were some question marks going into this game. Shy Wirt, a game time decision at quarterback for Georgia Southern. They have some injuries on defense. They have some injuries on offense as well. So... Shy Wirtz will start, but he's a little banged up. Injured ribs from the game last week, the win against Texas State. Now, I, I saw the play last week, and I wasn't sure of the injury, so it's not, I'm not sure what it is, but um, it was enough to be a game-time decision, but here he is. And Wirtz will throw on first down. Now he's going to keep it. He'll tuck it, and he'll run. He gets by Terrell Hanks near midfield into Aggie territory, and he's finally shoved out of bounds by Shamad Lomax. They don't throw much, and Wirtz thought about throwing and then ran it. Yeah, it's interesting. They come out looking to throw right uh, straight out of the box, right? And the thing is, you can tell right away. The linemen stand up. Everyone's going. But the option, you're up in the box thinking option. If they run four verticals like they did there, it makes it very susceptible, and you have to go back and honor those. So you end up with a big gap, and he exposed that gap. Another exposed play right here and takes it. What a strong runner. Ellis Richardson, the tight end to the right of the quarterback, Wirtz. The ball carrier is Logan Wright. And Wright is across the 25-yard line near the 20. Wesley Fields, the number one running back for Georgia Southern. He's out today with a groin injury. Yeah, he, he's out, and he's a, a strong runner, and they're going to miss him. But they have a lot of strong running backs, and uh, we're going to see a, a, all of them tonight for sure. Part of what we need to be thinking about from a defensive perspective, Adam, is you need to shove that, you need to stick that, that dive and stop that right away on that option. High snap, caught by Wirtz, speared in the backfield by Shane Jackson. Well, that's, that's, that's one way to uh, create the uh, mix-up in the option is have a high snap. But we were coming all the way, no, no doubt about it. We were coming off the edge hard and strong. He took a hit, 
Shy did, and yeah. everyone came screaming around him quickly on that too. So it's interesting. So I think there is some tenderness in whatever the injury is. It's a loss of seven for Wirtz and Georgia Southern. Pistol look here for Georgia Southern. Ball carrier again is Logan Wright, the redshirt freshman from Jacksonville, who's a big, big guy at six foot two thirty. Yeah, that's that dive. The first thing on that on that option, and you're running a triple option. If you don't, if you don't honor that dive and somehow shut it down, it's a give all day long, and it's just going to be, you know, hey diddle diddle, I'm going to run up the middle. What are you going <laughs> to do about it? So you you got to figure out a way to have those guys. Uh, stand their grounds in there. We need the Roy Lopez's of the world to really dig their heels in and hold that ground. Wright got back to the original line of scrimmage, so it is third and 10 for Georgia Southern. They have only thrown the ball 48 times the entire year. They're going to run it on third and 10. Miles Veen was the first man there, finished off by Lopez in the Aggies. I, I don't think he saw Miles being reaching out and, and grabbing him at the last second. I don't I don't think I did either. That was a, their draw all day long, right? Quarterback draw. Spread him out wide, fake the fake the pass and run. But boy, he was right there. Put out that big paw and just pulled him down. This will be a 41-yard field goal attempt for Tyler Bass, who has not missed yet this year. The wind is behind him. It is out of the hold of punter, McGill Bowerly. Field goal is up. And it is good for Tyler Bass. So he is now eight of eight this year and he makes a 41 yarder to give Georgia Southern to points on their first offensive possession. Georgia Southern five and one. One win away from bowl eligibility. The Aggies trying to spoil the party today in Las Cruces. For Vegas style action, play. New Mexico State football and Aggie Vision is sponsored by New Mexico Farm and Livestock Bureau, Comcast, Wells Fargo, White Sands Federal Credit Union, and by Pepsi. Here's a look at the Aggie defensive line with D-line coach John Mumford. 7-3, NM State with the lead early stages here in Las, Cor Las Cruces. Here's our quarterback comparison. Josh Atkins, the signal caller for the Aggie. Shy Wirtz, the man for Georgia Southern. Two different quarterbacks. Wirtz likes to run. He's only thrown it 47 times in six games. And Atkins has only been the starter now for four games, and he's already thrown for well over 1,000 yards during his freshman campaign. So two different styles for sure to the two quarterbacks today. Kicking into the win, that is booted there by Tyler Bass. And he had to have one of his teammates hold the football as well because the wind was knocking the football off the tee. It is a windy day. Wind is right around 20 miles per hour. And we'll get our second look at Atkins in the Aggie offense. Very sharp opening possession, Danny. Yeah, they just marched right down the field. I, I credit Coach Martin. Great play calling from bubble screen, screen, screens to quit screens to running plays to, to passing plays. It was a balanced attack all the way down the field. It resulted in a Christian Gibson touchdown run. Play action fake caught by Jonathan Boone. Boone will reach out towards midfield. Big gain on first down, and the Aggies are moving again. Yeah, I just see that middle open all day long. I know that Texas State did the same thing where they were throwing across the middle. They're playing middle deep, and you can see even on the screen, there's a big opening right there. That's exactly where Jonathan Boone went with that little uh, post in there and just open field. Catch and run of 24 on the pitch. It is Gibson into Georgia Southern Territory. Gibson is up to the 44-yard line of Georgia Southern. Great running right there. I know he saw something to the left, and he was trying to make another cut in there. Look at that hole, Adam, on that last play. Mm -hmm. The offensive line has really stepped up these last few games. I'm really impressed. Yeah, Doug Martin said earlier this week that last week was the best game the O-line has played this year. A little stop and start there on the catch by Christian Gibson. And you have to think, too, Danny, that the comfortable factor with Atkins is helping out the O-line right now. Yeah, I think when you get in a rhythm that you can just kind of feel where the quarterback is, how long he's taking to get rid of the ball, and you're right. I think they just get into a rhythm, and they feel good. Third down and two. Gibson zooms ahead for the first down and more. 
He's down to the 35-yard line, eight-yard pickup on a third and short for Gibson. Yeah, Georgia Southern's coming with the, with the blitz, right? So they're bringing everyone, and they still create a, a small gap, and when Christian just sees that, he just shimmies right through there and breaks into the second level in a hurry. Four carries, 25 yards and a touchdown already for Gibson, so 6.3 per carry. He's averaging 7.3 per carry for the year. Four out wide for the Aggies. Running back is Jason Huntley. Adkins will fake to Huntley. Fires across the middle to a streaking O.J. Clark. His first catch this afternoon inside the 10-yard line. Yeah, I mean, and maybe what we see there in that middle, again, across the middle that we talked about, first of all, a little pressure, but Josh steps up and great confidence across the middle there. But they're playing on cover two, so there's two deep safeties, and I think they just backed off too far. Bounce to the outside and into the end zone. Touchdown, Jason Huntley. They're on a roll, Adam. You know, part of what also is going on here is that you see tempo. So they've come and they've had many plays, and they're just going back to back to back. Everything seems to be working. It's a give to the outside. It's a little stretch. He sees a small gap. It doesn't take much for the speedy running back, and he gets into the end zone. Point after is good for Dylan Brown. Six plays, 75 yards, two minutes, and three seconds. Jason Huntley, his second rushing touchdown this season. What a start for the Aggie offense this afternoon. We are shy of nine minutes in, already two touchdowns for the Aggies. Rushing scores for Gibson and Huntley. It is 14-3 Aggies against a 5-1 Georgia Southern Ball Club this afternoon. Today's game is brought to you by the New Mexico Department of Agriculture, Farm Bureau Financial Services, and the New Mexico Farm and Livestock Bureau. Here's a look at Jason Huntley, 373 all-purpose yards last week. That is the most by a player this year at the FBS. There's Atkins. He's a perfect 9 of 9 so far today, Danny. Yeah, we talked in the open about him uh, firing on all cylinders, that whole offense, but in particular Josh making great decisions. But it's nice to have complimentary guys around you like, Jay like Huntley being able to pour it in running and receiving. More than likely see Brown squib it again. Yep, partly because Wesley Kennedy is so dangerous. This is Najee Thompson, though, on the return, and he is tripped up shy of the 30. It's windy. Kennedy is dangerous, so the Yankees choosing to yeah. squib on their first two kickoffs. I, I think that's wise because Kennedy is a very fast runner, and he will make you pay. And that's one thing you want to be able to do is, like, you've, you've t put two scores together back-to-back. -to -back. Yes, you've given up a field goal, but you still have the momentum. So you got to make sure you keep it and not let them break one on a kick return. Georgia Southern's triple option attack is back on the field, led by quarterback Shai Wirtz. Monteo Garrett is the man in the backfield, and we get a whistle blown before play starts, but no flag on the field. Something was said to the Georgia Southern sideline, and there is no flag, so we're back to action. First and 10 for Georgia Southern from the 28. Monteo Garrett is stuffed. Sniffed out by Leon McQuaker, the will linebacker. Yeah, there, there's many running backs that Georgia Southern has that can make you pay, but no matter who it is, you got to stop that first dive that we talked about. McQuaker was all over that one. They, it was a quick give right up the middle, and he squared him right at the line of scrimmage, tackling downfield, which is what they like, and just a great all-around play. Bunch formation around Shy Wirtz. You have Logan Wright, Monteo Garrett, and Wesley Kennedy. The dive give on the option is to Logan Wright, the redshirt freshman, who's been the primary ball carrier so far today. How tough is this option to go against Danny as, as a former defensive back like yourself? Well, I, I think it's you, you play assignment football. So what assignment football means is that everyone is assigned one guy. You have one guy that's looking for a dive. You have one guy that's on pitch. You have one guy that's covering quarterback. 
and you have to be very disciplined, but you still have to play fast. And by the way, when you're thinking run, you got to make sure, oh, you have to cover pass as well. So it's difficult. Third down and three for Georgia Southern. Option pitch to Kennedy, and it looks like he's short of the first down by a yard. DeMarcus well, Owens made the play for the Aggies in the secondary. That's a nice tackle by Owens there, because because Kennedy, we talked about his speed, and you'll see it right here. Kind of the pitch, quick pitch to the outside. That's one guy. He's like Huntley. You do not want to get him in open space. And if you're going to pitch it on the option, Shy Wirtz, who has some sore ribs right now as the quarterback, he's going to take some licks. He is going to take some licks because everyone is assigned a guy, and so you're going to get a hit every single time. That's just what happens in option football. The punter is McGill Bowerly, redshirt sophomore from Athens, Georgia. This is going to bounce towards O.J. Clark. Dangerous play. We've seen this before from O.J., who dangerously handles it on the low squibber. And the Aggies are going to be pinned inside the five-yard line. Last week, Bowerly had three punts pinned inside the 10 against Texas State, and he does it again against the Aggies in his first punt today. Tough field position for the Aggie offense when we come back. Quality opponent today in Las Cruces, Georgia Southern 5-1. and one. one win away from bowl eligibility. And earlier this week, Aggie sixth-year head coach Doug Martin talked about how good this Georgia Southern team is. Uh, Georgia Southern is a really hot team right now, 5-1, and one, uh, really playing well, a very good defensive football team. So for us to continue what we've done the last two games offensively, it's going to be imperative for us to have a chance. Uh, well, 94 yards to go for the Yankees. Ball is placed at the six after the really good punt by Bowerly. The pitch to Gibson, he's tripped up. No gain of the play for the redshirt junior from Dallas. Yeah, he may have a few more in there, but not too many more. It's tough to get out of your own end zone area, if you will. And, and you've got to be able to be careful with your plays because you don't want to do something foolish and create a uh, turnover. I don't want to jinx this, but you don't want to do anything like that. But you still need to be able to move the ball out. So if you do need to punt it, you can at least get covered, get the yardage back. Running to back, Royce Caldwell is a slot receiver in this formation. So in the backfield is Gibson. He gets the carry. The Aggies can use Caldwell in so many different ways, and sometimes he's still used as a wideout. He uses a wideout, and what happens is if you have him as a strong runner and receiver, you can also do uh, use him as a decoy, which is also another good thing to do because you have to know where those guys are on the field at all times. Third down and two for the Aggies. Big play here. Atkins sees something, so he changes the play at the line of scrimmage. Boy, is this guy bright. Doug Martin talks about it every single week. Atkins back to throw on a third and two. Find some running room. He's in a slide. He looked to the marker, Danny. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. That's pretty smart. You know, the first time we saw him, he's, he was taking on some of these uh, defenders. He was just taking them head on. It's like, shoot, I'm going to run you over. Well, that's fine, but the problem is if you get hurt, it's going to really make it hard. So now he slides, but he does the smart thing and to find out how far do I need to go for the first down. That's a smart play right there. That's a quick maturing quarterback. Atkins needed two. He got three for the first down. The Aggies will throw good protection. Low throw, though, intended for Caldwell, but Atkins had some time again because the O-line was so good up front. Yeah, lots of lots of time back there for Josh, and he went from right to left looking at all of the check downs and see who was open. There was no one open. Everyone was covered, so that was a great defensive uh, coverage um, play right there for Georgia Southern. Pistol back is Jason Huntley on second down and 10. Screen pass to Clark. Clark still on his feet, flag is thrown. Corey Martin, the wide receivers coach, is playing to the official near the sideline about something. We'll see what the call is on the field. And I honestly didn't see it, but that play came in from from the side there, and he threw that flag a long way, so he saw something. I'm not sure what it was. Steve Barron is a referee today. Holding 
Offense, number nine. That pedal would be in force, half the distance to the goal from the previous spot, second down. Sergeant Drew Dan, so on that screen pass, Dan held, which allowed O.J. Clark to get a little more open there. Yeah, that's a tough one there because that marches us back, makes it to second and uh, really long. It's a 10-yard penalty, second down 18 on the Aggies. Atkins inside his own end zone, streaking around, caught by Jonathan Boone again. And he crawls his way up to the 15-yard line, so he gets six, and it's going to be third down and long for Adam State. And this year, they are 36% converting on a third down, but they're 16 of 30 in their previous two on third down. So Georgia Southern playing a little soft, so they're back off saying, you know, you have a long way to go. I'll, I'll let you get five or six yards there, and that's not a problem. So we take what you give us, and then that puts us into a third and, and uh, not a short, but a third and long. Atkins on a third and 12, double coverage, and it was nearly caught by the running back, Jason Huntley. That was a tough one right there. I think that was a pick just waiting to happen. I think he looked at that one, stared it down the whole way. Brinson back there on coverage saw it, and he and he was with him all the, all the while. You can kind of see him just stare at right there. Nice break right at the last second by Brinson to knock it out there. Monquavian Brinson, one of the good ones for Georgia Southern, the junior cornerback from Atlanta. It was a team high 41 tackles this year. Pass breakup for him. Theisler will punt into the wind for the Aggies. Rugby style punts, backspin, not an Aggie bounce, <laughs> and it's going to be touched at the 46-yard line. I thought the whole goal of the rugby style is this <laughs> big roll, which we didn't get. A little backspin. Here, here's the impact players as we see it. Wesley Fields, you talked about Wesley, didn't make, didn't uh, suit out today, but there's a whole bunch of running backs to take his place. Kennedy third, Wesley Kennedy third, speedy, speedy guy. Got to keep your eye on him. Javon Ferguson and Reese has been playing super on defense. A little let down last week, but right now they're pitching a great game. Let's see if they can continue defensively. Yeah, Fields out with a groin injury. Came in with 472 yards and four rushing touchdowns this year, so a big loss for Georgia Southern. Wirtz will throw, and it is complete to the tight end, Ellis Richardson. And for Shai Wirtz, that is his first pass attempt today, just his 48th pass attempt all year. Well, it doesn't have any interceptions, which we talked about in the open. I think he was wide open there, so that was just going to be an easy catch there. But let's see what happens defensively. We're in a zone, and you see a, a, the tight end just kind of sneaks out into the flats, and it was just wide open. It was behind the linebackers in front of the uh, cornerback there, and just nice area to sit down in there and catch that pass. 31-yard catch for Richardson, just his third catch this year. Option die play, Wesley Kennedy, the slot receiver out of the backfield with his second rushing touchdown this year. We talked about the speedy running back, receiver, kick returner. You want to keep your eye on him. Looked like motion going one way. He came back as fast as he is. He was tiptoeing in the end zone real easy. You can kind of see it here. Everyone looks like they're flowing right. He comes back left. Ron LaForce trying to get up on coverage there and just couldn't get to him in time. And if he gets the corner, it is that. It's a TD. Point after for pass. Through. And it's 14 to 10. Two plays, 46 yards. Took 32 seconds for Georgia Southern to draw within four. They are not used to these shootouts, by the way. They're coming off a 15-13 grinder in San Marcos against Texas State last week. They like to run some clock, ball right. control offense. Right. This is a little unusual for the Eagles. Yeah, but in, in that in that scenario right here where we've had two quick plays, they had a quick quick scoring drive, if you will. But you're right. In general, their offense is, is, uh, is built on wearing you down, Long scoring drives, you get behind the score, you get behind the change, and you don't have a chance to catch up. But if we can stay on volley, you can keep putting points on the board. You're going to have to take them out of their comfort zone and, and have them throw a little bit more, which they haven't. But Wartz did have a good completion this last time. But let's see if the Ags have something to answer. Tyler Bass will kick off to the Aggies back deep. Caldwell and Huntley. 
I mentioned earlier, Jason Huntley, three return touchdowns in his previous 11 games dating back to last year. And here in this first half, if you're an Aggie return man, you might as well not even go out there because it's going to go through the end zone with the wind behind the kicker. Well, All right, Danny, what do you see uh, here? Here's what I see, Adam. I see Gibson coming off a game where he had three TDs. What a great game. We've already talked great things about him. O.J. Clark, very strong reception there. Five receptions last week. Brinson, we already called his name. He has one pick. He's the leading tackler. And on the front there, defensive line is Hunt. Hunt's a very strong guy who has the ability to lots of sacks. So you got to keep your eye on him. Motion man is O.J. Clark, the slot receiver. Play action pass. Completed to Royce Caldwell. Wrestled down near midfield by Brinson. That was a nice uh, nice catch right there and a, and a nice throw. And I can see what uh, Georgia Southern is trying to do a little bit. They're trying to get the safeties to not play so deep where they can come up quicker and try to make a play. There was, they were on him in a hurry, but Josh was able to thread that pass perfectly. 26-yard connection. The Aggies back into Georgia Southern territory. Quick strike to Boone, and oh. this one is dropped. I think Boone looked up because he could see that there were patterns on the left and the right far ends of the field, but the middle was wide open. All he needed to do is pull that in there. You see him coming across the middle of your screen right there, and there's a big opening right to the right, and he was already peeking of how many yards he could get, but first you got to bring that in. That would have been his fifth catch. He already has four catches for 40 yards. The Aggies run it on second down and swarmed is Christian Gibson. Right there was Randy Way Jr., the dog linebacker, Retchard sophomore from Blakey, Georgia. You know, Gibson, we've seen him on a number of games take that little dive right there where he bounces into the back of offensive guys and bounces it wide after that when nothing's there. In that case, they've really kept him corralled. There was nowhere to bounce at all. Third down and nine for Atkins, who steps up in the pocket. Pressure came. He still fires. Incomplete. Batted away by Georgia Southern. Intended for Boone. That would have been a first down right there, too. So Josh out of the pocket, showing his athleticism, going right, rolling a little bit behind him, and it allowed the defender to just to get his hand in there. If he could have just gotten a little bit farther to the, to the front of the receiver, that would have been a first down. That was safety Jesse Liptrot, who's filling in today for Sean Freeman, who's one of the injured players for Georgia Southern. So the Aggies will have to punt for the second time today. Another rugby style punt by Theisler that hangs up in the air. Fair catch is called for by Kennedy, who is run into by one of his teammates. No flag. That was a Georgia Southern Eagle who ran into Kennedy. Well, how about this, Danny? So coming into this game, Georgia Southern had allowed 13 points or less in all but two games. They've already given up 14 to the Aggies in the first quarter today, so that tells you how well this Aggie offense is playing right now. And they're moving along. I mean, this last series, it kind of sputtered just a bit, but they have big-time threats right now. Let's see if uh, the Aggie defense can dig their heels in there and kind of shut it down and stop this scoring on both sides as they're going back and forth. Shai Wirtz on the option. Option dive to Monteo Garrett. Three Aggies right there, including Roy Lopez and Leon McQuaker. It was Fergus in there on the bottom of the pile. Need to find a way to limit explosion plays. Last week, the Aggies struggled to get off blocks and allow numerous explosion plays, allowing 66 points to Louisiana. Yeah, you know, that's that's a it's a good thing to talk about, too, is getting off blocks, which we can come back to at some point here to, to really discuss. What's that mean when coaches say that? Before this game, Georgia Southern had only allowed three first quarter points the entire year. It's 14 to 10 Aggies after one. Second game of three straight games against former Sunbelt opponents for the Yankees. They lead 14 to 10 through one quarter. Quick pause from Sunbelt play for Georgia Southern. They are 3 and 0, chasing down a Sunbelt title this year. As a look at the previous three, all three Sunbelt wins for the Eagles. Arkansas State, South Alabama, and Texas State. The Yankees had won two straight against UTEP and Liberty before falling in a slugfest against Louisiana last week. Shai Wirtz is back in at quarterback. 
This is LaRoche, the redshirt freshman, his first carry today as he gets right at the first down marker. Matt LaRoche is a redshirt freshman from Venice in Florida, 5'9", 165. And he, and he is a very speedy guy. Looks like he's limping just a bit there, but he is another speedy one. We talked about all the speeds off, off the camera before the game started. It's like, I look at all these running backs, and look at all the guys that are so fast. He is one of those fast guys, and so I hope he uh, gets back out there. LaRoche gives the Eagles a first down. They're already down one running back. Number one back, Wesley Fields, out with a groin injury today. So can't afford too many injuries there in the backfield. Option dive to Monteo Garrett, who reaches up to the 30-yard line. He gets five yards on first down. Garrett is a quarterback turned running back, a redshirt senior from Talladega, Georgia. You know, if you can't shut that uh, that dive down to something less than five, I think they'll be content with taking that all day long, especially when the score is close, because they could eat clock and just run all the way down the field. So somehow, got to be able to, to uh, stick your nose in there and, and stuff that up. All right, back to the dive play. Switching it up to Logan Wright, the redshirt freshman from Jacksonville. Yeah, that's the style right there, right? So that's just the stick with it. If it's working, you're just going to have a small variation of it. And this time, they're just going to reverse around. It's going to give the dive, again, not so much option, but just a straight dive, allowing the spin allows the lineman to clear through there and get the blocks. And there was a nice hole for him to get up into. We couldn't have any more contrasting offenses going at it today. Two very different offenses. Slipping away from a tackle is Garrett. He wrestles across the 40 to the 42. He gets three. You have a spread attack with the Aggie offense and a triple option. We're going to pound it on the ground attack with Georgia Southern. And you see uh, Coach Spaziani, he's bringing two guys off the end and they're off the corner to try to squeeze that down and just stop that little dive in there. Wilcox almost had him, just not quite, but it still slowed him down enough. Georgia Southern only has 28 passing completions the entire year, and that includes this game. Wesley Kennedy used as a ball carrier as he runs into safety, Ron LaForce. He's a slot receiver, but they use him in multiple different ways. Yeah, they certainly will. They'll bring him in motion. They'll line him up in the backfield. But what it, whatever it is that you're going to do with him, you have to stop him near the line of scrimmage or he'll do just right there. He'll throw a little move on you and get to the outside. So Buford just kind of got shook a little bit. Georgia Southern into Aggie territory. Kennedy had a 15-yard rushing touchdown earlier. That last run went for 12. Right back to Kennedy. He's tackled from behind by Terrell Hanks. First time we have called his name today. He's back after missing three games with an ankle injury. Four-year starter from Miami. Yeah, it's good to have Hanks back because he's a very athletic linebacker. Great reach, great arm. So even though he's on a block, he rolls off the block to still make that tackle. And that's what they need. They need to stop that uh, first play for a short yardage and then see what the second and third brings. Second down and seven for Retchard sophomore Shy Wirtz and Georgia Southern. On the option, the carrier is Garrett and he's wrapped up. Donovan King, the true freshman. You know, Donovan King, he came on early on in the season and he was lights out. He was all over the place where they had to call on him because Cedric and others got hurt and he played very well, but the last few games you haven't seen as much of him. It's nice to see him back to where some of the earlier games we saw where he's just pouring it in there and getting involved in every tackle. That's his game face on right there. That's a nice play by Donovan King. It's all business right there. <laughs> Third and nine for the Eagles. Wirtz looking to throw, now looking to run. Wirtz has the first down and more. He's inside the 20 before he's finally taken down by DeMarcus Owens. That's the hardest thing to do right there, Adam, is being able to sit in coverage, trying to rush from the line of scrimmage. Everyone's out in a pass, and you're trying to also spy the quarterback, who's a very quick and fast guy, and he squeezes out, and there's no one there, so he can get all the way to well into the third level and get big yardage, big play. 
Wirtz got 31. He's at nearly 500 rushing yards for the year. Mateo Garrett again, straight up the gut. Tackled from behind by Demarcus Owens and Shemad Lomax was around there as well. You know, there's not a lot of flash, not a lot of big things are going on there, but it's just, you know, option, 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 you're gonna run, 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 and then look for the pass. And, and if the pass wasn't there, you just you just keep it like Wartz did and run it. In this case, it's just run and run. It's gonna dive them. If you can get three or four yards, they'll just play, you know, four or five yards in a cloud of dust all day long. They're okay with that. Second down and five for Georgia Southern from the eight. Option pitch, Wesley Kennedy. Kennedy, second efforts, touchdown. His second rushing touchdown today, his third this year. Well, that's the thing about the option, is that it's it's like two and one in ba two on one in basketball, right? So if you have if you don't have enough defenders out there, the quarterback's gonna make the right decision. In this case, the right decision was to pitch the ball quickly, get it out there in front, and let let him pick up the extra yardage and a touchdown for Kennedy. First lead today for Georgia Southern as they take a 17 to 14 advantage. Wesley Kennedy, a second rushing touchdown. This one from eight yards away, 11 plays, 85 yards, 547 off the clock on that drive. Uh, the best drive so far today for Georgia Southern. Yeah, there was a lot of it there. And if you look back on the drive, on on the this is the this is the touchdown. This is the quick pitch. So assignment football. Everyone has someone. We came at Wirtz. He quickly pitched the ball. Knew there was nothing there. And we're two on one fast break, and they got the touchdown. But if you look back on this drive, Adam, it's the big one that that Wirtz was able to break free and scramble and get those hu huge yardage is the one that really kind of broke the camel back on that last drive series in there. So they stopped him and he was still able to scramble out and pick up big yardage in there. So this is a this is gonna be a chess match from here on out. But the Aggies gotta stay in this thing. They gotta rally back and get some points on the board and answer these. The Aggies now allowing 7.8 yards per rush in this game. Georgia Southern and Wirtz, they've only thrown it once. It was a completion for 31 yards. But as expected, they are just running the football, 20 carries for 156 as a team. This is Royce Caldwell who touched it, so he has to take it out, and the Aggies will have tough field position again at the 14-yard line. Now the Eagles for this quarter, they're kicking into the wind, but the Aggies could not take advantage. Yeah, Caldwell can also take one to the house on you as well. It's just too bad he couldn't field that thing cleanly. Josh Atkins, 11 of 15 for 118. No touchdowns, no picks. Retro freshman out of Spring Branch, Texas in the San Antonio area. Motion man is O.J. Clark. Running back here is Jason Huntley who cuts back to his left. Running room for Huntley who sidesteps out of bounds at the 35 yard line. Huntley gets 21 on first down. I, we almost we almost saw a sprint to the end zone here. Here it is, kind of a stretch play. He sees that he can cut back against the grain and breaks that wide. If it wasn't for Dun Duncan's correct um, correct path to the football, that would have been six. Huntley again chased from behind, spins to get a yard there. The previous carry for Huntley goes for 21. In the last three games, Georgia Southern defensively had only allowed one carry of more than 16. Huntley got 21 two plays ago. Atkins will throw on second down and nine. Completed to Drew Dan. His first catch today. I think they said he dropped it. Mm. I think he just got squeezed right at the end there and put it on the carpet. Hey, you know, you got to help your quarterback quarterback out. Of, and on those, if you get the ball and it hits your hands, I know you're gonna get you're gonna get hit. And you just gotta figure out a way to hang on to that thing. 
Two guys there for Georgia Southern, both Jay Bowdry and also Monquavy and Brinson. Third down, nine yards to go for the Aggies. Time again for Atkins. Throws across the middle, and this time Drew Dan does hang on. That says a lot, Danny, about Atkins going right back to Drew Dan after he dropped the previous pass. Yeah, no doubt about it. And there were two guys. There was a multi-level in there, right? So there was one guy that was mid-level for the first down, Drew Dan right there. And there was also someone deeper. And I thought he was going to throw for the deeper ball who was breaking across the middle as well. And I think that was Huntley. But either way, get the first down. 15-yard connection. Rolling left, Atkins being chased by Griffin. Oh. And it's dropped by Shea Holbrook Jr., the junior from New York. That was going to be an, a great, awesome play right there where you see Josh Atkins feeling, feeling the pressure, and he's just nice and calm in the pocket. I'm just so impressed at how calm he is back there. Squares his shoulders, and he tries to get that out. He's rolling to his left, which is hard to throw the ball. you got to square your shoulders up, and Shea just could not hold on to that ball. Quick strike to the far side. Royce Caldwell has a first down. Dropped the ball after the tackle. Then he pounces on it. First and 10 for NM State. You know, we talk about these quick plays, and it's these quick screens that we live on. And the reason is, is if you can get four or five yards on those, then they have to go out there and start playing those. And you have a lot of options are in there. Almost let that thing go. A lot of options. You know, last game we called her Liberty. He had the same thing, and he pumped one and sent him deep on a on a quick go. And uh, man, that's you just got to be careful. Atkins downfield, caught by the five foot eight Royce Caldwell. How about that for a catch? I liked it. I like the composure of him getting up in the air. First of all, great protection by the line. Good, good, calm presence by Josh. Nice pass to get the ball up there and just goes up and hangs on to that thing. Great concentration on that by Royce Caldwell. First down and 10 from the 11. Right back to Gibson. Powers ahead. Second effort for Gibson, who gets six yards on sheer grit right there with his 6'1", 2'10", body. How can you not just love the way he plays football? It's just a never-die attitude. Second down and four yards. Gibson dancing around, and he won't go anywhere. He was met by Ty Phillips and also Brinson. I, I like the idea, though. We're going tempo, right? So it's like, get down there quick, get the ball to him again. Let him just pour it in there if he can. Couldn't do it, so now you're going to just uh, kind of reset. Tried to bounce this one to the outside, but nothing happened, nothing there. No gain, third and four from the five-yard line. Gibson's in the backfield with Atkins. Atkins will look towards the end zone. Rolling right, has time to throw. Does he have a receiver? Atkins will throw it out of bounds to avoid the sack. And the Aggies will have to bring out their field goal unit on a fourth and four. You know, nothing there at all. So I, I applaud him for scrambling to get out there and to kind of look at the field and see if someone will break. Receivers are out there running all over trying to get there. I, I think coach feels like maybe there was someone that was open early on. I didn't see it, but um, when in doubt, though, you know, get rid of the ball. At least you can walk away with some points and get some points on the board. 22-yard field goal attempt for Dylan Brown. The wind is with him. Brown this year is 7 of 9 on field goal attempts, and we have a tie game. Well, it's not a touchdown, but the Aggies settle for three. And we have a good one this afternoon at Aggie Memorial Stadium in Las Cruces. Chad Lunsford and Georgia Southern looking for their sixth win. The Aggies looking for their second straight win against the Eagles. If I lose. We are deadlocked at 17, an offensive game so far today here at Aggie Memorial Stadium. Adam Young along with Danny Nee, a former Aggie. Six and change left to go here in half one. Today's game is brought to you by the New Mexico Department of Agriculture, Farm Bureau Financial Services, and the New Mexico Farm and Livestock Bureau. 
I don't think this is the way we expected this to go, Danny, where yeah. there's uh, a lot of points on the board. Yeah, I, I agree with you. You know, it seems like we just said that last game we called it was against Liberty. We didn't see it happening that way. So there's always something new about these games. And, you know, that reminds me of when I was uh, talking with Coach Sukup, our linebacker coach, and said, well, what do you do to really rally the linebackers to get them going after last week? And he said, you know, they quickly forget and you're on to the next thing. And so it's a whole different uh, whole different approach to the game, whole different outlook. And I think that's what we see today. It's like we come and we get surprised. And so it's a new start, it's a new game. Now let's see if the defense can figure out how to shut down that uh, combination option and a couple passes in there and breaking quarterbacks. And Dylan Brown might need a holder here. They blew the whistle because the ball blew off the tee. Brown kicking with the wind behind him. And I say we didn't expect this many points on the board because Georgia Southern only allows 17 per game. They've already allowed 17 today in about 20 minutes. They've held two straight opponents to 13, and the Aggies are rolling offensively right now up they and down are. the field. They are. It's interesting that even on that last one, we, we've got a field goal on the, on the, on the whole series. You, you can see the coach Martin still wasn't satisfied. He felt like there was something that uh, Josh missed and felt like we could walk out with seven as opposed to just three. We, we'll take three, certainly, but there's always a push to do, you know, try to stay up. And so now it's the defense's turn. Let's see what they can do. See if Coach Baziani has something to dial up, a combination of a couple stunts and something to keep them off track. There you see the passing numbers and the rushing numbers for Shy Words, who is a run first quarterback. Four carries, 56 yards. He's only thrown one pass. He's only thrown for 414 yards the entire year. And they're going to run it again. No surprise there. Going to move the change for Logan Wright in Georgia Southern. That, you know, that's just power football right there. They're just going to load it up in there and just pour it in there. You see someone pulling across there, a little quick trap up the middle. But as long as they can create a big gap in there, and they'll just run that all day long, and you end up having to run the force coming in from the safety spot to make a play. So they're they're getting to the linebacker, they're blocking at the point of attack on the line of scrimmage, and that just leaves Ronald Force to make a, a play or another safety. Georgia Southern averages 257 rushing yards per game. Play action, and here's a pass. Mateo Garrett makes the catch. Rear pass, just the second ball thrown today by Wirtz. Yeah, nothing doing downfield. Had everyone covered right there, and so had to go to the uh, outlet, out quick dump to Garrett in the, in the flats, and he was still able to pick up a few yards in there. Good coverage, nice penetration on the defensive line there, put a little pressure on there, and had to get rid of the ball. Second down and six for Georgia Southern. They average 28 points per game. They only allow 17 per game. They are 5-1 this year, 3-0 and in the Sun Belt. Monteo Garrett. We'll get the first down. He needed six, he got seven inside Aggie territory. You know, Miles Fine was just inches away from having a, having a jersey on that. You'll see him right here in the bottom of the screen that it comes in off his block and just couldn't quit, get there in time to, uh, to make that tackle. Georgia Southern almost had 200 yards rushing already, 175 for them, eight yards per carry. The Aggies allowed 759 yards total of offense last week, the third highest total at FBS this year. Wesley Kennedy runs right into Terrell Hanks to the 45-yard line, so he gets two on the first down run. You know, we're getting penetration on that defensive line in there, and you can even see some of the frustration on some of the uh, Aggie defensive linemen who get there, but they just can't hold on. I, I guess that's a credit to Georgia Southern and their running back. So there you are, you have them in the backfield, you have your eye on them, and if you don't make a tackle, they're not gonna stop and they just keep going. Again, Miles Vine had them and just kind of squirted out of his hands there. Miles filling in for Deshante Lloyd, who is out for the year with an injury. At that nose tackle position. LaRoche wrapped up quickly, no gain. That was Miles Bean again. He's right in the middle there. He's playing a good game. He's missed a couple of tackles, but you know, he's in the mix of it. So the coach's job is to get the players to the right position. And then the player has to make a, make a play. So Miles has been right there. Hey, that's a big bubba right there too, by the way. And he's, uh, 
He's done good. He's played good games so far. He's just inches away from making a lot more tackles, but we need him in there clogging that, clogging those uh, A A gaps, if you will. He had a season high four tackles, a season high one and a half for loss, and a half sack, which also was a season high. All last week. Roy Lopez can't get to Wirtz. Wirtz directing traffic. Pass is caught by Devarius Bargner. How about that Houdini act for Shy Wirtz? You know, Shy Wirtz got out of there. Roy Lopez is, is a tough, as tough as they come in terms of bringing quarterbacks down, and he just couldn't hold on to them. He just squirted out there, and, and as he kept the play alive with his legs, you see right there, Roy Lopez just couldn't get there. And as he keeps the play alive, directing, directing all his receivers, and you get a linebacker, I think that's Hanks had to come off his guys to come up to Wirtz. And that's what happens when you have a quarterback that scrambles. Do you stay back or go get him? If you go get him, he dumps the ball. 23-yard catch and run for Bargner, the freshman, just his second catch during his freshman season. And this is Logan Wright, the redshirt freshman again. He gets seven. Just meticulously working down mm -hmm. the field, aren't they, Adam? It's just run, 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 third down, come out on a pass. You, you roll Wirtz out because his... His advantage is his wheels, he's speedy. He gets out there and you have to honor it and he dumps the ball so then they come back to the dive. Just dive, dive, dive. Yes, sir. Wesley Kennedy on the ground, no gain. The Aggies have had some stops but then they allow the explosion play and the explosion play is what is hurting the Aggies the last couple of weeks. Yeah. And it always seems like it comes down to one or two plays, you know. Last week we talked about there was one where we had, uh, we were down by seven. We get a penalty. We had been off the field on third down but couldn't get there here. We're, we're getting close on third down, but we just can't corral Wirtz and keep him in the pocket. And if that's the case, it makes it very tough because then you have to have someone spy him, and that takes someone away from covering someone downfield. Line to gain is the 12-yard line. He wants to run again. First down for Wirtz. Spins away from Ron LaForce. And he's taken down at the five yard line. He gets 11 to bring up a first down and goal for the Eagles. You know, I, I, I know early on we talked about, well, he, he's a game time decision on whether he can go. There was ribs or something that he took in there. Well, I don't see much of, of anything slowing him down at all. In fact, that's a great run. And if it wasn't for Ron LaForce, he would have walked that one into the end zone. Georgia Southern at the Aggie five yard line. Kennedy already has two rushing touchdowns. He is wrapped up by Roy Lopez, the D tackle for NM State. That's a nice job by Roy Lopez right there. Boy, you know, it'd need that defensive line to continue on. 38 seconds left in half number one. Georgia Southern has the ball to six when we come back. According to the 2018-19 Center for World University Rankings, New Mexico State has been ranked in the top 4.3% out of 18,000 degree-granting institutions of higher education worldwide. For more information, go to newscenter.nmsu.edu. All right, Danny, it's going to be second down and goal from the six for Georgia Southern. There's a look at Malik Denby. One of the two injured starters on defense for the Aggies. This is this is a big stop if the Aggies can find a way to get it here in the final 40 seconds. Yeah, they got to figure out a way to just get off the field. And if holding them to a, a field goal, that's that is certainly would be a victory down here. But you got to keep them out of the end zone somehow. Pistol look, Logan right, the pistol back. In motion is the tight end Cam Brown. Logan Wright is going to be short of the goal line, and it's going to be third down and short. Three yards to go on a third and goal for Georgia Southern. That's a that's a great uh, call by Georgia Southern, a great stop, right? This this dive has been working all day long, and you just go power dive right up in there and see if you can't get it. Aggies dug their heels in there and made a great stop. Now this is a little tougher. Clock's moving, and a timeout is called by Georgia Southern. 12 seconds remaining. 
in half number one. Third and goal for the three after this. Only 12 seconds left in half number one, 17-17. Georgia Southern has the ball at the Aggie three-yard line, third and goal. Coming up for Georgia Southern offensively, and we'll see what defensive coordinator Frank Spaziani can draw up right here for the Aggie defense. Former Boston College head coach who's done a great job as the D.C. He certainly has seen a lot, so he, he would be one that would draw on to say, what, what do we do here? Clearly, you want to stop that dive because that's one where they've just punched it in from three yards out. But you also have to be careful of where it's bouncing around the outside. So let's see what Coach Spaziani called up. Nose tackle, C.J. Wright is in the backfield. He is 290 pounds. Look out for big number 94 here on a third and goal. They fake it to Wright. Rolling right is Wirtz, and he has the end zone for the touchdown. The Aggies were worried about the big fella, and Wirtz scampered in. Yeah, you know, you want to stop the dive, but you also want to be able to say, keep your eye on Wirtz. He's one where you got to know where he is at all times, and we just got caught up in there, and he just walked that one in, made it easy. Three-yard rushing touchdown for Shy Wirtz, and for Wirtz, that is his ninth rushing touchdown this year. Point after from Tyler Bass. That ball flying around with the wind. 24-17. So that'll make Chad Lunsford feel a little better about the way his team played in the first half. His defense has struggled, allowing 17 points, which is right at their season average, which they allow 17 per game, and they've allowed 17 so far in the half. So there's, there's the big guy. It was almost a decoy, the guy you were talking about coming in. And uh, so they gave the fake to him, rode him in the hole all the way, and he just pulled that thing out, and everyone's honoring that big big man up the middle and just let him get out of sight. You know, Adam, we talked about how fast this, this uh, half went, and that's that offense. You know, when you get into this option offense and you get behind and score, they can eat up. Now, lots of time and then score and then they're getting the ball in the second half so they're in a good position right now. Yeah, Georgia Southern will have it to start half two. It's been a back and forth first half. Only six seconds remaining so we'll see what Bass does right here kicking into the wind towards Huntley and Caldwell. And he's gonna give the Aggies a chance to return this. And it's Royce Caldwell as the return man. Royce Caldwell is taken down to the 40 as time expires. So the Aggies had a shot to get a return touchdown as time expired, but Caldwell is tackled. Here's Aggie football head coach Doug Martin. 24-17 is our halftime score. Georgia Southern with 199 yards rushing in that first half. They averaged 6.6 .6 per carry. And NM State's much different, 171 through the year. They also had 104 in the ground. Both offenses were really good. We'll try to catch up with Coach if we get a chance when he heads to the locker room. He's going to address his team before they head in. You know, so certainly I, I believe he, he feels like they're in this thing, and he's a, he looks very determined right there to say, don't, don't, don't fall back into last week's uh, – funk that you had get your head up and get this thing done because they are close they are in this game coach strapping on the headset coach how impressed were you with your offense in the first 30 minutes today yeah we did some good things uh adam you know we need to uh, one of those games we're going to score every possession it looks like hey coach danny nee, hey the defense what do you see that we got to make uh, adjustments on that well you know again we had a couple of busted assignments on the quarterback we had a spy on him let him get outside and, you know, when they throw the ball, you cannot let the quarterback scramble. That's the biggest thing that's killing us right now. All right, Coach, good luck and have two. Okay. That's Aggie head coach Doug Martin. 24-17 is our halftime score. 171 through the air for the Atkins. Rushing touchdown Huntley. Rushing touchdown Gibson. The Aggies within a touchdown at half. 
time to get things underway at half two here in Las Cruces at Aggie Memorial Stadium. Adam Young, DNE &E with you. It is a sliver of a kick into the wind for Dylan Brown to start things. Wes Kennedy is the return man for Georgia Southern. He's a good one, and he runs over Ron LaForce, and he gets up to the 40-yard line, and that's where Georgia Southern and quarterback Shy Wirtz will begin. Danny, they only had three pass attempts in the first half. They ran the ball a ton, 30 carries as a team, almost 200 yards, 6.6 .6 per rush. The Aggies knew coming in, you had to stop the run, and that's still the case. Yep, it, it is the case, and it's uh, certainly you can see um, both teams playing to what they do, their strengths. We're passing clearly, passing strong, running from there. We have to stop the run. you got to figure out a way to stop that dive and then words. Option dive to Logan Wright. That is his eighth carry today. He's been good in the absence of Wesley Fields, their number one back, who is out with a groin injury this afternoon. Yeah, I don't think they've uh, lost a step in that. And, and um, Fields is a great running back, but they have a crew of running backs, and they've done quite well in there. And part of that is the blocking up front, the schemes that they have. They're creating nice big holes for them to run to. Nine-yard gain for Logan Wright on first down, so it's second down and one for the five and one Georgia Southern Eagles out of Statesboro, Georgia. Option dive again, first down for Garrett into Aggie territory. Dropped there by Terrell Hanks and Ron LaForce. Yeah, I know we talked about it in the first half, but unless you can stop that dive, they're just gonna go to it. And here we come off the edge trying to figure out a way we can squeeze it from the, from the edges in and we just can't get there in time. That's Hanks trying to make that play from the top there, and it's LaForce finishing it up. Garrett will head off for Georgia Southern. Bringing in some fresh bodies. They're gonna run in a lot of guys. Kennedy's in the backfield, so is Logan Wright. Kennedy will veer to the outside across the 40. Good enough for a first down again, so the chains will move again for Georgia Southern. Gain of 11 for Wes Kennedy, who has two rushing scores today. You know, the speedy Kennedy, he gets to that linebacker level in a hurry there, and he just bounces that outside, and he gets to the third little level in a, in a quick order right there. You see him, nothing up the middle. He bounces it outside and just uh, pulls down and, uh, after a good 10 yards or so. Kennedy's a good one. He's a slot receiver, but he has not caught a pass yet today. He's been used in the backfield in the running game for Georgia Southern. The pitch, Kennedy again. And he's met there by Demarcus Owens. There the we Aggies have done a pretty good job today on the pitch. Yep. There, there we go, that's what you need to do. I, I think Demarcus Owens saw that one coming the whole time. He came in there, open field tackles, the toughest thing to do, and Demarcus Owens showed how to do it properly. He gets in there, squares his shoulder, he breaks down and wraps and hangs on. No gain for Kennedy, so second down and 10 for the Eagles. They average 28 points per game. They only give up 17 per game. Trying to reach bowl eligibility this afternoon in Las Cruces. Motion man is Richards in the tight end. Turn around and a handoff straight up the gut. Logan Wright dragging tacklers near the 20. They're gonna mark him at the 20 and a half yard line. First down again for the Eagles. You know, again, the Aggies are trying to pinch it, coming around the top, trying to figure out a way to stop that thing, and they're trying to plug the hole there. You see Vines get kind of stood up, and when a minute you get stood up, it means that there's a big hole right behind there, Ray, just a little push in there. I'd like to see more people gang tackling right there. First guy to the ball, hang on. Second guy, rip the ball. That's one of the things that we can do to turn the tide here is create a turnover. Words the quarterback. Hands it off to Monteo Garrett, who dances around, finds a hole, tripped up. Did he get in? Touchdown, Georgia Southern. 20 yard rushing touchdown for Monteo Garrett, his fourth rushing touchdown during his redshirt senior campaign. Well, you can expect to see a lot more of the run right there, so it's just a straight-up give in there and just find the hole, find this, this, the little crease and just pour it up in there, and we just can't stop that right now, and it's a, it's a death by a, a thousand paper cuts. They just continue to do it, as I would if I was the offensive coordinator. Got to figure out a way to dial up a stop on that. They're going to check this out. He might have been short, Danny. 
He was tripped up, and I think his knee may have come down short of the goal line. So they're going to check and see it. Our referee today is Steve Barron. If this holds up and if Georgia Southern tacks on the extra point, this has been quite the run by them because they fell behind in the first quarter 14-3. to three. So if the touchdown holds up and they get the extra point, that means Georgia Southern would you know, have scored 24 the previous 27. You, you know, Adam, as we're looking at this play right here to see if he scored or if he's short or not, there's one thing I do notice is that our defensive line looks like we're getting stood up in there, and when that happens, it creates big holes for these guys to run into. And let's see if he um, is a little – I think he may be just a, a little short. This, by the way, is the view that the officials are seeing as well on the field. So they're looking at what we're looking at as well. Yeah, he's short. A great effort by Monteo Garrett, the quarterback turned running back. And there's a look at head coach Chad Lunsford. Hey, his that's first full year with Georgia Southern. That's one way to come out and uh, start that second half, right, is just march it down the field. There you see Coach Baziani, who, who has a wealth of knowledge on defenses. So if there's someone that can figure out how to stop, create a stop, it's going to be that man there. But you can see right there, look at the defensive linemen that are getting stood up. That's the start. In the After backers. further review, it was determined that the runner's knee was down and the ball was at the one and a half yard line. It'll be Georgia Southern ball, first down at the one and a half. All right, so he was not in, and the ball is going to be at the one and a half yard line. I'm sure Georgia Southern and Chad Lunsford are thinking, okay, that's fine for us. We're just going to rush it in again. They haven't st stopped the run yet, right? So you can expect that. But also, Wurtz will pull the ball. But I, I think if you're Coach Baziani, I just line up in goal line and bring them all. And so let's just go. Let's just let's just rumble right here. Logan Wright powers ahead, and he's on his feet in the end zone. Rushing touchdown number one in the career of Logan Wright, the redshirt freshman. Again, nothing new here, right? They're just sticking with that same dive right up the middle there, and then just pushing the linemen back into the backers, and the backers are just getting lost in all the all of the uh, offensive linemen that you just can't see and end up just pushing on in for the score. Point after from Tyler Bass, the redshirt junior from Irmo, South Carolina. And it's good, 31-17, Georgia Southern. Two rushing touchdowns today for Kennedy, one for Shy Wirtz, and now one for Garrett. So four rushing touchdowns for Georgia Southern. Also a field goal for Bass, which was their, their first scoring drive of the ball game. is the climb, the try is good. The holdup was there was offsides on the Aggies, but that's declined, and the point after is now on the scoreboard, 31-17. Well, so Adam, now it puts a little pressure on the offense. You, you would think that it's just the defense that has to wear it, but it's not true because if you can't stop them defensively, you got to look holistically at the whole team, right? So your defense is having problems and your offense is scoring. You have to have your offense keep, keep up scoring every time they touch the ball the kids to stay in the game. Georgia Southern will kick into the wind again. It's a windy day in Las Cruces. Wind is right around 20 miles per hour. It's also cooling down a bit. It was 71 degrees at kick at 4 p.m. And now we're approaching 6 p.m. here in southern New Mexico. Bass needs a holder, and he boots it through the end zone. Georgia Southern, with a win today, would go to 6-1. and one. They would reach bowl eligibility, and this is quite the turnaround for them. Now, they were once an FCS powerhouse. They won six titles at the FCS level. They did well early at the FBS level. They went 9-3 and three overall, 8-0 and oh in the Sun Belt back in 2014 in their first year at the FBS level. 
but they're coming off back-to-back -back losing seasons for the first time in the modern era. And Chad Lunsford is getting things back to normal in Statesboro, Georgia. On the first down and 10, Josh Atkins, who has played great again today, is rushed from behind. He gets it loose. He was rushed there by Raymond Johnson III, the DN for Georgia Southern. You know, that's one on, it's on Josh. So Josh is looking around trying to figure out what he's going to do and uh, see if a receiver is going to break open. He checks the crossing route, nothing there. In that case, he just held on to it too long, just a little bit too long. Jason Huntley's in the backfield with Josh Atkins, the quarterback. Huntley finds a hole up the middle. Jason Huntley will move the chains as he picks up 10 yards. Checked at 12 yards. On second down. You know, part of, part of what makes that play such a uh, great play is that you've been able to throw the ball so well. So they have to respect the pass and they're opening up. And when they open up, it leaves a hole for Jason Huntley and others to get up into. Right back to Jason Huntley who's trying to squirt free. First man in the stop for Georgia Southern was senior Logan Hunt, the defensive end. Gain of one for Huntley, second down and nine from the 38-yard line. Adkins rolling right. Doesn't have a man. Gets a few yards as he sidesteps out of bounds, and they're going to mark him right around the 44, it looks like. Kind of got six there. Officially marked at the 42, so it's third down and five for Atkins and the Aggies. It's a it's big third down right here to keep on par with the scoring. Aggies are really good today on third down. Four of seven. Atkins lost the football. We might have our first turnover today. Georgia Southern football. It slipped out of Josh's hands, and Georgia Southern takes over. Well, I was thinking turnover, but I wasn't thinking Georgia Southern. Here they just kind of fell back in a zone, and they were deep and not allowing anything back there. And it looks like that just fell out of his hands, out of his grips. Isaac McLean had a shot to get to it for the Yankees, but it was Quan Griffin with his first fumble recovery this year for Georgia Southern. Well, that puts him in a great field position now. Jai Wirtz at quarterback for Georgia Southern. Hand off to Wes Kennedy. Kennedy breaks the tackle of Ron LaFour as he's still on his feet. And he's taken down from behind by Leon McQuaker. I know there's no excuses for a fumble like that, but it's a little chilly today, Danny. I mean, it could be a little harder to grip the football, maybe. It, it might have been some of those things that kind of snuck out. Just plum just fell out of his hand there as he's throwing it. And it happens. There's nothing, you know, nothing you could do other than let's go play defense. But you got to play defense. So here we saw the first play of the game. It's a run, and we're not tackling. You know, it wasn't the Christmas of the first crispness of the first half where you had gang tackles, guys flying to the ball. We're just missing tackles, and, and if that's that's just going to allow them to make an easy run right at the goal line here. Option dive again to Logan Wright, who's a big body, and he continues to stampede forward. He is six foot, two hundred and thirty pounds. He came into this game with only nine carries for forty yards and no touchdowns this year. And he's been active today. 10 carries, 84 yards, and a touchdown. Yeah, he's a load. I think if you're going to take him, you got to get down low. You know, low pads win, and so you got to make sure you get down there. Otherwise, he will just drag you along. Fits in perfectly with his triple option offense for Georgia Southern that wants to run the football a ton. Once again, they are averaging 257 rushing yards per game. They're going to get that again today. Mateo Garretts in the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. And they continue to pile it on here on the road, looking for their first road not conference win since 2013. Kind of got away from us here a little bit, Adam, with the, with the fumble, giving him a short field position. But we still haven't come up with an answer to stop the run. And if you don't, then you're going to continue to see this just straight up the gut. Everyone's going to slant one way. They're going to give him the ball and find a hole. Ty 
Tyler Bass with the point after out of the hold of McGill Bowerly, the punter. 38-17, Georgia Southern. Rushing touchdowns for Garrett and also for Wright here in this half. Georgia Southern, 38-17. Aggie Vision's presentation of New Mexico State football is brought to you by Wells Fargo, Comcast, White Sands Federal Credit Union, Route 66, and by Sunland Park Racetrack and Casino. Well, the lead was 11 early in the first quarter for the Aggies. They have fallen behind now by 21 against Georgia Southern, a red-hot Sunbelt team that is starting to pile it on offensively. We'll see what Josh Atkins can do to respond. Kind of a freak play moments ago with a fumble by Atkins. The first turnover today on either team. And Georgia Southern was able to capitalize with a rushing touchdown for Garrett. Yeah, you know, it's um, it just all of a sudden the tide just turned. You know, when that momentum went, it just went all the way around. And now they got to they got to figure out a way to get back and score and get this back to a two-score game where they can dial up a defense to figure out some way to stop them. The Aggie offense today has been very good. Atkins is 14 of 22 for 171. The running game has been effective. The Aggies averaging 5.9 yards per rush. Rushing touchdowns for Huntley and Gibson. Atkins once again getting a lot of guys involved in the passing game. Eight different receivers have caught a pass. Pistol back is Gibson. Gibson with a good run on first down. Gibson is up to the 38 yard line, so he gets 13 on the carry. Gonna get a little tempo now, but I sure like the way Gibson runs the ball. You know, nothing to the left, he jumps to the right and sees it back into the left side and just jumps in there, and, but takes care of the football too. Right back to Gibson, no gain. Christian today has 12 carries, almost 60 yards. Logan Hunt has been a busy man, our defense today for the Eagles. Second down and 10, right back to Gibson again, and he can't get to the edge. He was stopped by Raymond Johnson and also C.J. Wright, the freshman. Yeah, there's just nothing there like you were saying. He tried to jump out to the outside there, but we just couldn't create any gap at all in there. And so they just plugged the hole and nowhere for Christian to go. Big third down and 10 for the Aggie offense. Atkins throws, intercepted. Intercepted by Kendall Vildor. Takes it to midfield where he's tripped up. Vildor with his second pick this year, the junior from College Park in Georgia. You know, Adam, sometimes when, you, when you're trying to press, and, and we are, we're trying to press so we can keep up on scoring with him, and you try to do more than you really should, and then that's the case here. I think he was just pressing too hard, and he let one throw right into the middle there. They were back there lots of time, and he just dumped it right into coverage. Two straight turnovers on the Yagis. Fumble by Atkins. Then an interception for the Atkins. 38-17, Georgia Southern, midway through the third. Some rare mistakes for redshirt freshman quarterback Josh Atkins and Georgia Southern taking advantage. Today's game is brought to you by the New Mexico Department of Agriculture. Farm Bureau Financial Services in the New Mexico Farm and Livestock Bureau. How about this? Georgia Southern now this year with a turnover margin of plus 13, and they have forced at least one turnover in 10 straight games. I guess that reflects the, the, winning, the winning season they, they're having. Words drops back. He's in a throw, rifles a pass that is caught by OB Fortune, his first catch today. 
Well, we thought for sure Georgia Southern was just going to put the ball on the ground, Danny, and try to run out the clock. Yep. And now Wirtz goes to the air for just the fourth well, time today. I, I think part of it is, is that as we're trying to figure out a way to stop the run, you end up you know, having everyone up in the box trying to do that, and it leaves the lanes open. And so they have to take advantage of whatever's there. In that case, it's a, it's a pass right down the seam, and it was wide open there. Wirtz is 4-4 four four for 77 yards. Yes, Kennedy and Wright. He goes to Kennedy, nearly dropped for a loss by Buford, but he makes it a positive gain with his second effort. You know, those the tackles when you're at the at the first one to the ball carrier, you have to figure out a way to hold on, and you'll see him. This is the pass. We're going back to the pass. That was a nice pass. He bullied that thing right over Javon's hand, right right inside the uh, safety, right in front of Ron LaForce. Second and one for Georgia Southern. Right behind Wirtz. And the handoff goes to Wright straight up the gut. It was wide open for the redshirt freshman to barrel through. And those are nice holes to run in, right? So if you're a running back, that's what you want to see. You see Javon Ferguson jumping in there to, to make a tackle. It's a good thing he did because he was going to walk in there. But that's a, but that's a, it's a hole. That's a hole you can put a truck through. And there's got to figure out a way to, to to have someone sit in those gaps and not let those areas get so uh, get pushed out of them so so easily. Aggie head coach Doug Martin talked a lot this week about the defense struggling to get off blocks last week, allowing numerous explosion plays, and that has happened at times here today as well. Here's another big hole and another rushing touchdown for Logan Wright. He came in with none, and he has two here this afternoon. Well, you know, when you when you uh, can't stop the run, you're going to see it again and again and again. We see a, a nice big hole in there. Stands up defense lineman, creates a seam. Backers are out, couldn't get to him in time, and safeties were, were nowhere to be seen, and he just walks on in there. A one-yard rushing touchdown earlier in this quarter for Logan Wright. This one from 13 yards away, extending the Georgia Southern lead. And it's now 45-17 Eagles. It was 24-17 at halftime. 21-0. The Eagles have outscored the Aggies here in the third quarter. Aggies need some catching up to do when we come back. An impressive offensive third quarter for the Georgia Southern Eagles out of Statesboro, Georgia. Coming to Las Cruces today, trying to improve to 6-1 and one on the campaign. We are all united in our concern for those affected by Hurricane Michael. United Ways across the region are helping communities face the devastating effects of this storm and offering hope and help when and where it is most needed. To find out how you can help, visit unitedway.org. Danny, you mentioned moments ago about Atkins maybe pressing. That's the last thing he can do right now, but that's the most common thing folks will do in this situation, right? Yeah, I think he's he's feeling the, the pressure that he's got to march down the, the field quickly, and um, it just kind of forced one into coverage that wasn't quite there. And that's what happens when you get behind and you start pressing. The, the interceptions are going to are going to happen from time to time. And we get a flag late. There were some extracurriculars. I believe it was Jonathan Hood out there for the Aggies involved. And for Georgia Southern, it was retro freshman Ben's Josue. And the way Hood reacted was that the penalty is going to be on Josue. Without a penalty, it would be first and 10 for the Aggies at the 25-yard line, but they may get some additional yards here. Steve Barron is our referee. After the play, we have a dead ball on sportsmanlike conduct, number 54 of the kicking team. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced at the 25-yard line, first down. Well, the Aggies catch a break there. 
Now you got to capitalize on that. So you're down by 28. It's 624 in the third. So there is some time. I mean, it's not completely out of the question, but it has to start with the drive that you can put together and get on the board. Aggies will start at the 40. Josh Atkins had only thrown one pick in his three starts before today. Today he's thrown a pick, and he's also had a fumble in the last two possessions, nonetheless. Low snap, dump off, completed to Jason Hutley. Good block on the outside as well, and the Aggies are into Eagles territory. Good play on first down. Man, that was a nice play by Huntley. That he, he put some little moves on some folks out there, and that was a good toss by Josh. Coming off an interception, look how he has to get the ball over the, over the hands of the defender, the defensive end that's there, and just dump it in, and he's able to do that. So there's confidence there. So my hat's off to Josh. He's still out there working it hard. Player down for Georgia Southern, that is Jay Bowdry, the redshirt junior from Thomasville, Georgia, who limps off the field with some help. He was involved in that play there for Jason Huntley. 17 yard connection. Atkins 15 of 24 for 188, no touchdowns, one interception. I think he's due to get back in that end zone. It's been since the first quarter since we've got there. But not like that. And we get some movement up front. We haven't had many penalties today. We'll get one here. False start. Offense number 78. Five-yard penalty. First down. When it rains, it pours, and the Aggies are struggling in many different facets right now. That is on Brian Trujillo, the Albuquerque native, redshirt junior, 6'4", 315. Yeah, I still think that's part of the pressing thing. You're trying to get down there and hurry and get to the block, get to the things that you need to do to, to get on the board her, uh, in a quickly, and it just sometimes you do that. Quick strike to the sideline. That pass was caught at midfield by Royce Caldwell, and nothing doing there on the edge. Yeah, I think all that play is, is Jonathan Boone blocks his guy. You get some yardage. He missed his block that time, and there was just no yardage to be had with it. It's going to be second down and 15 for the Aggie. Slow snap again. There's been some bad snaps as of late from Jamin Smith, the center. The Aggie offense in the first half, Danny, was in sync, and they are not in sync here late in the third quarter. Yeah, it seems like we've lost the rhythm. We lost the recipe, and now you get you get pinned after starting with a, a penalty and puts you in good starting position, and now you end up with third and long. Officially third and 16 for this Aggie offense. And in third and 16, Georgia Southern's going to drop deep and allow you to catch it underneath, but they're not going to give you anything that deep. The Aggies need the 33. Atkins fires short of the first down marker. Wow. Second effort, though, might have got it. That was Drew Dan on the catch. And it looks like it's going to be just short of a first down. Well, that's great determination by Drew Dan. He catches the ball. He knows where the first down marker is, and he fights back to get it or get close to it. Here we go, fourth down. Fourth and one for the Aggies. They're going to go for it, of course. Design keeper for Atkins, and he gets it. He needed one. He got two, and the Aggies move the chains. I think sometimes we forget, Danny, that Josh Atkins is still just a freshman very early in his career. Atkins will throw on first down. He steps up in the pocket underneath. That's Jason Huntley, who's taken down by Joshua Moon, the senior free safety. Might have been a horse collar, though. There's I think a flag it, down. I think it was. I think he was just trying to reach out there as he was getting by him and just grabbed the uh, horse collar. Josh jumps his things out after everyone's covered down there. Let's see if he just starts high there. But hmm. Would you agree, though, Danny, that at times because Atkins has played so well, we forget he's only a freshman? I, I would. I absolutely agree. And when you were saying that earlier, I thought you were going to go to, let's see, what he has, let's see what he has to say. Personal foul, horse collar. Defense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. 
You know, Adam, I, I do agree with you. I think we forget that he's a freshman. And also on that keeper there, I think we also forget that that he's a he's a big guy at 6'2", 218. He's no small small dude out there. So he was going for that first down. He's a, he's a big guy to go get it. But, yes, he's a freshman. We do, we do forget about that quickly, thinking he's got to do it all. And he's really just come on midway through the season. Aggies have it now at the 17-yard line, looking for their first point since the second quarter. And Doug Martin has to use a timeout here. He didn't like something he saw, and he's speaking to one of the officials. So he has to use one of his timeouts in this scenario, and he'll have a chance here to huddle up his offense, driving, trailing, 45-17. New Mexico State has called the their first quarter. time out of the half. Well, this game is done today. Check out nmstatesports.com for all your Aggie information, stats, scores, updates, nmstatesports.com. It is your home for New Mexico State Athletics. Could you tell what was going on there, Danny? I, <coughs> I could not. Uh, certainly, Coach Martin was talking to the officials. He just, just didn't want a timeout, but he didn't like something that was there, and I'm not sure what it was. So he's forced to burn the timeout. You know, I, I still think it's a good timeout, though, Anna, because you still you want to get in the end zone here. You got 354 in the third. You got to you got to fight back. You don't give up yet, and you got to get in the end zone. So that was a good timeout if you weren't on the same page. Motion man is Jonathan Boone. Atkins looking left. He throws left to Boone. Boone makes a move inside the 10-yard line. He's tripped up there by Joshua Moon again. So Boone is tackled by Moon, and the Aggies get nine yards on the play. I like it. Quick dump off to him. There's, you know, under Boone, he's running an underneath pattern there, runs everyone off deep. You can see someone pulling on Bryce Roberts' jersey on top, but. Jason Huntley veering off to his right, just short of the goal line. Going to mark him down at the two. He gets six, but he gives the Aggies a first down, so it's first and goal well, for there, the two. There was a great block that allowed that to happen. Here, going to go a little tempo now, try to get it in there. Atkins right back to Huntley, and he's taken down. Big tackle right there. That was John Ferguson, the linebacker, who's been seldom used during his freshman year for Georgia Southern. Man, Ferguson, he came shooting through the A-gap there. You can see him. No one's blocking him, and so he had a free shot right on Huntley right there. Nothing doing there. Eagles have some guys banged up. or a shot. Bird is out. Tamarcio Reese has been battling an ankle injury. They also have Sean Freeman out today. Strong safety who's out with an ankle injury. Substitution infraction, defense, 12 players on the field. Half the distance to the goal, first down. 12 players on the field for Georgia Southern, so a fresh first down for the Aggies. Wow. And that also moves the ball from the two yard line to the one. Hey, any break, any way, we'll take it. Tight end, Bryce Roberts is in. In the backfield is Huntley, low snap. Huntley gets the carry, and Huntley's in the end zone. First points for the Aggies here in half number two. Jason Huntley with the rushing touchdown. It's his second rushing touchdown today. It is third this year. Yeah, that's a nice finish right there, especially coming off a turnover. You, you put a big drive together, you get all the way down there, and you just push it in there. And so great blocking up front. You can see those big guys up front creating that gap for Huntley to stick his nose in and go get six. Keep us in the game. Point after is through for Dylan Brown. So it's 45-24. Aggies within 21. And like you mentioned, Danny, it keeps the Aggies in the game here. And Sure, they have a couple of turnovers here in this quarter, but the Aggies have found a way to score 24 points against a defense that only allows 17 per game. 
and allowed 13 or less in all but two games coming in. So this defense is really good, and the Aggies have scored 24 so far. They've done good, and I think it gets down to what we talked about in the open is, you know, the defense has got to figure out a way to, to dial something up to get in the game, to create a stop, to get off the field. And so we're going to see what Coach Spaziani and the rest of the defensive coaches can pull together on creating that stop because it has been, they've owned the line, of, the defensive line of scrimmage they have owned. Still some time left, but you worry about this Georgia Southern offense and their ability to milk the clock. And the Georgia Southern offense with that triple option attack will try to use clock. It's a ball control offense. It's hard to play from behind against a Georgia Southern offense like they have. Squibber by Dylan Brown, pounced on at the 30 yard line. You won't see Georgia Southern give up very many leads like this during the course of a season. So let's see what coach can dial up in here. And I think it starts with the, with the big guys up front, with the defensive line. Got to figure out a way to get those guys to, to sit in. And it's easy for me to say, right? Just get them to stay in the gap. It just be, you know, play gap conscious football and stay there. It's, it's not so easy, especially when you're getting pushed around. But let's see what he can come up with. Wes Kennedy takes the handoff. Big pickup again. On the first down, he's going to get six. He was taken backward, but still finds a way to get six yards. And Georgia Southern's averaging now seven and a half yards per rush. So they're getting big gains on every time they carry the football. And, and the clock keeps running with uh, every run too, right? So they stay in bounds. They're got, they got a hit. They got a lead. And it just eats the clock as you, as you get big chunks in here. And you got to figure out a way to get a stop, pull the ball, create a turnover. They are in no hurry ahead by 21, late in the third on the road. Pistol back is right, already has two rushing touchdowns today. And he's just dragging tacklers. He drags Javon Ferguson for a first down. That's impressive. I mean, you, you, you wrap up, you get there, you hang on, and he just gets a drug in there. So here's the, the option, bounces it back. It's a quick dive, he's just gonna release the ball to him and. He just still gets five yards easy. First and 10 for the 41. Georgia Southern looking for their first non-conference road win at the FBS level. Now this is just their fifth year at the FBS level. Their last non-conference road win came when they were FCS and it came at Florida in the swamp. Monteo Garrett, first down carry. They're always falling forward, too. All these backs, they, Garrett, Wright, LaRoche. They are doing that. that. That was a good stop, though, on first down there. They plug in the holes there, staying in the gaps, and so that, that, was, uh, that was pretty good. I know there's a lot going on in the mind of that man, Frank Spaziani. How can we stop the run? Aggie struggled against the run last week. Struggling again this week against this triple option, Georgia Southern offense. There you see Ron LaForce has 16 tackles today to lead the Aggies. This is LaRoche. Just his third carry today. Another red shirt freshman. The top two backs for Georgia Southern, if Wesley Fields is healthy, are seniors. Then you have Wright and LaRoche, two red shirt freshmen. They have four guys they'll use, but Fields is out today, so it's Garrett, Wright, and LaRoche getting the carries. So here we are, third down, third and four. This is a, a good down to figure out a way you can get a stop and get off the field. Eagles need the NM State 49-yard line. Wright dives at the marker, and he's going to get it. Got it by a half yard. That's tough. We saw, I saw Hanks kind of sneaking in at the last second here. He was going to try to come in off the corner and try to blitz in there and just couldn't get there. So we go to the fourth. Georgia Southern outscores the Aggies in the third, 21 to seven. But the Aggies scored a late touchdown to stay in it. 45-24 Eagles here in Las Cruces. 
345 yards rushing today for Georgia Southern, which is above their season average of 257. And we still have one quarter to play. 45-24, Georgia Southern behind a big third quarter. The Aggies led 14-10 after one. Georgia Southern has outscored the Aggies 35-10 since. There's a look at the offensive coordinator, Bob DeBess. Danny Aggie fans know him well because he was at UNM before coming to Georgia Southern, and he ran the triple option attack for the Lobos. He was very successful at UNM running that option, and he continues his success here tonight. Option handoff to Monteo Garrett. He's had a good day. That is Garrett's 12th carry. He's over 60 yards. He has a touchdown. He's a redshirt senior from Talladega, Georgia. You know, it just gets harder and harder. I know the coaches are trying to mix things up and bring people off the edges and kind of trying to just figure out what is it that we can do, a, a stunt up front. Maybe you move people around, but they're hitting so fast on that first give that you can't, there's not a lot of time to do a lot of stunting, and you end up trying to just bring people, extra people in. Second down and two. All right, back to Garrett, finds a hole, and he squirms past Shamai Lomax down to the... 33-yard line. And you saw that last play. You saw Jonathan Hood trying to sneak up in there to try to find a gap to push in there. And you see Jonathan Boone. He gets picked up. So the offensive line for Georgia Southern has done a great job in any extra people that we're bringing to try to slow the run down. They've managed to pick them up, or they just sneak in underneath them. And uh, we just haven't been able to figure it out yet. Georgia Southern trying to finish off their fourth straight win. The Aggies will need a huge comeback from Josh Atkins in the offense. Need to get a stop first on defense here. Wes Kennedy, slot receiver who's been used in the running game a lot today. Kennedy also has 14 carries. So you look at the stable of running backs, Wright with 15, Garrett with 13. Kennedy's been used in double figures. Wirtz has run the ball six times. LaRoche has three carries. Running back by committee for sure. Sure. Um, again, we see Aggies just coming, screaming off the corner, trying to get there, but you can't, you we're just not getting there in time to stop that quick give up front. Shai Wirtz, the quarterback, the redshirt sophomore from Clinton, South Carolina. Right back to freshman. Logan Wright, and he tripped himself up, or he might have got by Ron LaForce there. And that's, he's slow to go off. Yeah, that's a, that's a big hole. Uh, again, there, there's some gaping holes in there, and that is, he's gimping off there. Yeah, that, you take a look at that big offensive line. They've owned that line of scrimmage tonight. Georgia Southern has only thrown the ball four times. Shai Wirtz, four of four for 77 yards. 52 rushes today for Georgia Southern. Which is not unlike them. Very similar to what they usually do, week by week. Shane Jackson right there to make the tackle for the Yankees, the first man to stop him. But like we talked about, they're gonna milk the clock. They're really hard to come from behind against, and uh, here you see the clock moving. It's approaching 12 minutes left. Yeah, you, you, you run out of uh, run out of timeouts. You don't have enough timeouts, and you got to get off the field as fast as possible. But but here they're in scoring territory. You got to hold them to a field goal, and but it starts with uh, everything up front. You got to stop that dive. Straight up the gut, Wes Kennedy pinballs off of Ron LaForce and also Komote Kofi at the 11. A half dozen there on the pickup. Third and four, and it's a big one here for the Aggie defense. Here we see right here, here's the holes we're talking about. See, uh, see McQuaker got to get pushed out of the way, but they push the lineman down one way, and the flowing linebackers just can't get there, and they can't get off the blocks. Third and four from the 11. 
Georgia Southern has been great on third down today, five of seven. Logan Wright can't find a hole up the middle this time, and he's going to be short, a couple yards short. So if you're Georgia Southern, you would have to think they're going to kick it here, right, Danny, on fourth and one? Yeah, I would think so. I think you're going to kick it, and and the, and they're just taking their time, you know, taking care of the football. He's got both hands on it, and you can see as he's diving up in there, he's going to grab the football and make sure he's going to take care of it. But that's a good stop for the Aggies. You know, that's the first stop in uh, this half that we've been able to stop them from getting in the end zone. Tyler Bass will kick into the wind, and field goals are not gimmies from this distance today. This will be a 25-yard attempt for Bass, who has not missed this year. One of one today, made from 41 yards, and he is right through to make this a four-possession game. That's a big kick for Tyler Bass. It was a three touchdown game, and now it's a 24 point lead for Georgia Southern. Yeah, that's a good stop for the Aggies, but but the clock isn't in our favor, and you gotta figure out a way to, to get some points on the board. You got 10 minutes, and each drive, if they're taking four or five minutes per drive, you, you gotta figure out how to get score and shut them down and not let them take five minutes or four minutes on a drive. And they took seven minutes and 41 seconds on that drive. Yep. 13 plays, 62 yards. And that is exactly what first year full-time head coach Chad Lunsford wants to see. A long sustained drive that ends in points. And now the Yankees look up and there's 10 and change left and they're down 24. The wind has played some tricks today in the return game. We'll see if Jason Huntley has the chance to return one here. Seems like nobody can kick off without somebody having to hold it. The wind blows the football off the tee again. So Bass will get some help. Georgia Southern in position for their sixth win this year, which would give them bull eligibility. And this one's going to bounce out of bounds, so not a good kick for Georgia Southern, and they're going to have to start at the 25-yard line. The Aggies will with 10 and change left. Georgia Southern has only been to one bowl game at the FBS level. The ball will be placed at the 35-yard line, first down. That was in 2015 before two straight losing seasons. They would have made a bowl game in 2014, but they were still ineligible due to the uh, transition from FCS to FBS. And they apparently applied for a waiver, could not get that approved, even though they won nine games in 2014. Josh Atkins will throw on first down. Has some time to midfield, hauled in by O.J. Clark who hasn't had a really busy day, only a second catch here today, but there is a flag down near the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's in the holding territory there. Josh, lots of patience. Holding, offense, number 78, 10-yard penalty. It's on Brian Trujillo again. And that is the second penalty today on the big man from Albuquerque. Gonna make it a little tougher, but you, you're gonna have to make up a lot of ground anyway. And so Josh, the last pass, lots of patience in there, and waiting for guys to come open and deliver a, a bullet. He's gonna have to do it again a little farther this time. So take away the catch for Clark, who has combined for 15 in the previous two weeks, but just one catch today. Christian Gibson having a good day again. Gets across the 30 before he is upended by Moon, the free safety. I like the balance, Danny, that we've seen today between throwing the football and also running the football. Yeah, you know, we've, we've got uh, several running backs in the game here that Gibson has really turned it on and uh, Huntley as well. But, yeah, the balance makes it nice because the defense has to pay, play you balanced as well. Second down and 13 to the sideline for Gibson. That is only his second catch during his junior year. 
And it's going to bring up third down for the Aggies. Third down and about two yards. Yeah, that last play there, I know he went quickly to Gibson, but Bryce Harper looks like he was open right across the middle there. You see Bryce Harper coming across the middle, sitting right there wide open. Gibson also open, so he chose to go to Gibson. Jason Huntley is the running back on third and two. Adkins checks down to Huntley, catches at midfield. Huntley sidesteps at the 40. Good pickup on third and two for Jason Huntley, and the Aggies move the chains. Well, you know, the last few games, Huntley has really turned it on. He's a threat running, receiving the ball in, in the open. What a dangerous guy. Kick returning. Yeah, he had a really good game last week. 373 all purpose against Louisiana. Good game again today. Two touchdowns today for Jason Huntley. And Atkins will have to whistle it out of bounds. Almost caught by place kicker Dylan Brown on the Aggie sideline. And it's going to be second down and 10. Everyone covered. Nothing Josh could do with the ball, so he got rid of it, threw it in the stands, and lives to uh, bring it back. So certainly doesn't want to create another turnover. Huge difference in passing yards today. 243 for the Aggies, only 77 for Georgia Southern. Jason Huntley eludes a tackle. Larry Rose-like on that one, Danny, and yeah. finds a way to get a couple extra yards. Yeah, good call. That's exactly the Larry Rose bounce left quickly after that. Uh, the determination is there, right? So what a great opportunity. Well, they didn't tackle him. So if they didn't tackle him, you just don't fall down. He just bounces back outside and creates uh, something out of, out of nothing, really. But let's see his determination there. Looks like they have him. Not. He pawns out, squirts to the left, picks up positive yards. Third and four, Gibson has the first down, and he's up near the 15 to the 16-yard line, 15-yard pickup. For Gibson, it was probably going to be four-down territory anyway, but it doesn't matter after that Gibson run. The Aggies at the Eagles' 16-yard line. Atkins. Will run, gets a block from Tevis Abraham and slides at the 11. Might have been a late hit yeah, by Georgia Southern. I think uh, as he was sliding feet first, the defender came in with a helmet down. And I think they're going to call him for it. And that's so hard if you're a defender, Danny, to yeah. kind of let up. I know yep. you try to and, ooh. Might turn out to be a little more than we thought initially there yeah. from freshman Ben Josue. There's some problems with targeting. Defense number 54. Half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. Automatic first down. The previous play is under further review. I did not see that initially, but on the replay, that may uphold Danny that might be targeting yeah, yeah. big implications right because then he would have to sit out first two quarters of next week well let's take a look here there we go take care of the football because he was carrying it out there a little bit slide so he should be safe but then there was a, a lead tackle with a leading helmet did he lower the crown did you see that I couldn't tell Once again, this is the, the look that the officials are getting as well. When the play was going on, it, it seemed to me like Josue was trying to get out of the way, and he inadvertently hit Atkins, but then at the replay, it looks a little different. Yep. Josue is a, a freshman linebacker. Georgia Southern had a linebacker ejected for targeting last week in the first half against Texas State. That was Deshaun Cooper. But that was in the first half. This is in the second half, so if this holds up, Ben Josue would have to miss a half Thursday against App State in a big Sun Belt game for them. 
But look at Josh and his ability to scramble and keep the play alive with his legs. You know, that's what happened in the first half with us where we couldn't, we couldn't get Wurtz and we couldn't box him in. And he ended up squeaking out and ended up getting huge positive yards. And that's the same case here, is when, you, when you're coverage and you're covering someone and the play is taking so long. It'll be first down. Could you hear that, Danny? I couldn't hear it, it was just kind of. Okay, no targeting on the play, so Josue can stay in the game. He's not disqualified. But still a big penalty. Still positive penalty, right? And you can see Coach is still not happy, no matter, no matter what the outcome it is. There was a personal foul on the play, and that play will be that foul will be enforced. First down. First and goal for the Aggies from the five-yard line. Here's a look at the numbers today for Adkins. Very uncharacteristic. Two turnovers today are Josh, who has to get away from a rusher. That's Randy Way Jr., and he's taken down. Ball is loose. Looks like the Aggies did recover, though, right around the 15-yard line. That's Jamin Smith, the center, who was able to smother it. I think he saw it as he's scrambling around here. If you look to the back of the end zone, I think that's Jonathan Boone to the very back of the end zone. You see his legs here, you see him popping up right there. And I think that's who was trying to get the ball the to. on the field was a fumble recovered by the offense, second down. And Atkins loses eight yards. So it's second and goal from the 13. Empty backfield, five out wide for the Aggies. Sideline pass to Boone. He has a lot of running room. He's across the five yard line, he gets back to the original line of scrimmage and then a couple more. They're gonna mark him at the three. 10 yard pickup. Spread him out wide, get the ball to him and just go get some positive yards. I think Georgia Southern is kind of playing a soft right there and allowing him to complete something short and so that's what we did. Let's take the short and run as far as we can. It's actually gonna be marked at the one yard line. So third and goal from the one. In the backfield, Huntley looking for his third touchdown, and he has it. Touchdown, Jason Huntley. Great blocking up front. We bring him in there, tight formation. We're going to run it right at him and just put hat on hat and just push it in there, and he does just that. So that's a nice score by Huntley. It's a nice drive we put together. Forty-eight, thirty-one. Jason Huntley had a rushing touchdown of nine yards in the first quarter. One yard rushing touchdowns in the third, and now the fourth. Three for Jason today, and the Aggies are within 17. Beautiful night here in southern New Mexico. The Aggies back home playing their second to last home game of 2018. The Aggies We'll have Alcorn State and FCS school in a few weeks. That's our November 3rd. 48-31 the score. Jason Hundley with three touchdowns today in that previous drive. Danny, you mentioned good drive, long drive, 10 plays, 65 yards. The unfortunate part is it takes three minutes and 58 seconds at a time when you really need quick scores. Yeah, and so this puts it back that says, well, you're 17, it's doable but they're the option team that has been running the ball nicely and chewing up the clock. So you gotta figure out a way to get stops up front, create a turnover, something. Today's game is brought to you by the New Mexico Department of Agri Agriculture, Farm Bureau Financial Services, and the New Mexico Farm and Livestock Bureau. So there you saw the onside kick. That kinda lets you know we're 17 down. You gotta figure out a way to get the ball back and it just didn't come our way. So now you got your defense to step in there and, and dig their heels in and quit a, get a quick stop to get out. They're striking the Wonder Dog, taking the tee off the field. 462 yards of total offense today for Georgia Southern, 385 on the ground, only 77 through the air.
Triple option attack. Leads to a carry here for Monteo Garrett, the redshirt senior from Talladega, Georgia. So there's Jonathan Hood coming off the edge to see if he can't squeeze that quick give down. And um, he was able to make a tackle. They're still able to get five yards out of that. So I expect to just to stay with that and just pour it right up in there. And four or five yards in a cloud of dust is what they're going to play the rest of the game. The Aggies only have two timeouts left. Had to use one earlier. Tight end Ellis Richardson is in. He's to the left. He's a lead blocker there for Garrett, and that's one of the better stops all day. Yeah, Hanks and doubt. Wilcox double teaming that one. So we finally got someone across or coming from the edges to squeeze that thing down, and they weren't able to pour that in there fast enough for them uh, not to get there in time, and they did. They put the boom down on him. Third and eight for Georgia Southern. They are five of eight today on a third down. That's after a tough couple of games on a third down, six of 24 in the previous two coming in. And a timeout is called, and we'll keep it here. The Yagi's down to one timeout remaining. When you start burning them to the right, so the clock, you gotta stop it. You're thinking, okay, I, I can get a stop on this third. That'll give me the ball back. It's 17 points. 535 still doable I mean there's things that crazier things that have happened but it all starts with this third down you got to get a stop here turning out to be a pretty chilly night and a big reason why is the wind our stuff has been blowing up here the entire night and it's another windy day here in Las Cruces. We're used to this. What a turnaround it has been for Georgia Southern and head coach Chad Lunsford. Before this season, they were 4-17 and in their previous 21 games, and they are in position to go to 6-1 and this year and reach bull eligibility. Option dive to Garrett, and he's going to finish shy of the first down by a few yards. So... Georgia Southern's going to have to punt. We haven't said that often today. Not very much. They've only had one punt. And it was in the first quarter. And that's when we saw McGill Bowerly last. It's fourth and four. No sign of the punting unit yet. I think they may go for this. Well, you know they're confident in their running game. And they're averaging almost seven yards per carry, so why not? You only need four. And now they're going to bring out the special burn teams. just going to burn it down, take a flag and delay, push it back, which won't affect their punting too much. Words was hanging around, hanging around, and now Bowerly and the special teams unit comes out with 4.45 left here in quarter four. This will actually give Bowerly a few more yards to work with. Wind is in his face. O.J. Clark is back deep for the Aggies. Look at this one just hang up in the air. This is a tough fair catch. Well done by O.J. Clark. So the Aggies will have it at the 20 yard line. They need a quick score, trailing by 17. The New Mexico State University Fire Department has upgraded its rating by the Insurance Services Office, a report card for fire departments. It rates response capabilities, water distribution systems, and also emergency communication systems. For more info, go to newscenter.nmsu.edu. It's a 17-point game, so it is a three-possession game here at Aggie Memorial Stadium with only 4.37 remaining. Here's a look at defensive coordinator for Georgia Southern, Scott Sloan, who's in his first year. Comes over from Appalachian State, who Georgia Southern will play in a big Sun Belt game on Thursday. So it's going to be a short week upcoming for the Eagles. 
They had a Thursday game before playing the Aggies, so nine days between games, and now a short week again coming up. Empty backfield for Josh Atkins on first down, and this oh. one probably should have been picked by Tamarcio Reese. If Reese doesn't get that, though, and we complete that pass, that's we're off to the races there. So, uh, again, that's one where Josh looked at him the whole way, and it was a quick toss anyway, right? So there he is looking him down, Ooh. and he just didn't quite see Reese just jump in the picture at the last second there. Reese does have one interception this year. Pressure comes. Atkins gets away, whistles a pass, good throw. That one's caught by O.J. Clark to give the Aggies a first down. Going to run that two-minute offense now. You're going to get up there in a hurry, but that's nice arm strength of Josh. You can see him scrambling and throwing that on the, on the run. That's a great pass. Empty look again for the Aggies. Five receivers in right now. We'll see if the Eagles show pressure again. Good job up front. Streaking across the oh. middle was Huntley. And I don't know if he thought a defender was right in front of him or what, but kind of stopped running. He did. They kind of looked out of, out of sorts a little bit. He looked like he was looking at the defender that was coming at him as opposed to looking back at Josh, and I think Josh is trying to tell him that now. Great throw right there. Look at that bullet right at him, but he just wasn't looking back. The Aggies run it there on second down. And that was Huntley as the ball carrier. So it's third down and eight. Clock moving under four left. Botched snap by Atkins, and it was a pretty good snap. So it's going to be fourth and long for the Yankees. I think wow. he just mishandled it. I, I think so too. I, I didn't. I think he was kind of looking and trying to figure out what else he could be doing with it or looking downfield a little bit and just peaked a little bit. But that makes it hard now because you are in four down territory. I mean, you're in four down situation. And so it's going to be a fourth and, uh, fourth and seven. The Aggies need the 48. Atkins fires, caught for the first down. Jonathan Boone is wrestled down by Kendall Vildor and the Aggies move into Eagle territory. Great arm strength right here. Put them all out there. You got to, you know where you got to get to for the first down. He sees Boone and just delivers a strike right on the numbers. Eight different receivers have caught a pass from Atkins today, who is 22 of 34. And he gets rid of that one. He was hurried by Raymond Johnson. Trevor Vleem no was over there as well. In the area. Second down. No intentional grounding, so it's second down and 10. Lots of pressure, nowhere he could go with the ball either, so he just had to kind of make it out towards the receiver and just get it out there. You would love to see the Aggies at least finish the game on a scoring drive. Back to the ground for Christian Gibson, so third down and long for NM State. Clock is not their friend right now, and we do have a flag on the play. Offense, number 65, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Holding on Tony Bello, who's been playing very good, making his third straight start at right guard, Danny. Yeah, he's been a nice addition to that front line in there, but got caught with the hold here, but he has really helped that, that offensive line come together and put some points. So that makes it second down and 20. Long way to go for the Aggies to the sideline. That is Anthony Muse, and that's the first catch today for Muse. So nine different targets for Josh Atkins. Muse had six combined catches in the previous two games coming in. You know, they're, the Aggies are posting a lot of points. I mean, if they can get in here, they, they can post some big numbers, but those big numbers just haven't been holding on. Atkins right back to the sideline, right back to Anthony Muse near the original line of scrimmage, which was the 49-yard line. Josh, he's, that's all him right there, right? He's just scrambling around, keeping it live with his feet, trying to find something out there. Scrambles out, sees Muse out there, and just dumps it quick out to him. 
Fourth and nine, the Yankees, of course, will go for it. Clock moves under two minutes left. Need the 39-yard line of Georgia Southern. Ball is loose. And Georgia Southern has smothered it. Third turnover in this half by New Mexico State on offense. A couple of fumbles for Natkins, also an interception today for Natkins. Let's see what happens here. I think just lots of pressure on there, and he just, the pocket breaks down. Nothing he can do with it, and just got caught trying to run around with the ball and got it knocked out of his hands. Looks like Josh Johnson got to it. We'll double check when we come back. Nope, it was right. CJ Wright with the fumble recovery. 141 left in Las Cruces. One forty one left in Las Cruces and George. On our Thursday against Appalachian State, Georgia Southern's three and zero in the Sun Belt, so they have a chance at a Sun Belt title this year. This is a good football team, Danny. It is a good football team, and they're gonna. They'll, uh, it'll be a good game this Thursday. Meanwhile, the Aggies will travel to San Marcos next Saturday for a 5 p.m. game against Texas State, a team that almost beat Georgia Southern last Thursday. That was a 15 to 13 final. That was a close game. The offense had good moments again today for the Aggies. The three turnovers, of course, the blemish. But this offense is putting up points. They are. The defense has to find a way to stop the run. Yeah, I think you're right. I think here they have victory formation. I think you're right. I think the offense is coming together. We had some turnovers, but that's from pressing, trying to get a lot of points, get things moving. The defense, we just had too many get by us, and we got behind the chains and the score, and, and the clock, they just ate it down. Big congrats, too, to Chad Lunsford and his program. What a job he has done. And they're going to be bowl eligible in 6-1. and one. It's going to be just the second time being bowl eligible at the FBS level, albeit they've only been FBS for five years now. They were 2-10 and 10 last year. They were 0-6 when Chad Lunsford took over. He had the interim tag. It was taken off before the final game last year. He was 2-4 and four as the head coach last year. And now they are 6-1 and one in his first full season as the head coach. And this is a program that was a powerhouse at the FCS level. And they are well on their way to doing the same at the FBS level. 48-31, the final here at Aggie Memorial Stadium. NM State drops their second straight. And Georgia Southern with their fourth straight win. And bowl eligibility on the road in Las Cruces. First non-conference road win for Georgia Southern at the FBS level. When we come back, we'll have post-game activities. 48-31, Georgia Southern defeats the Aggies here in Southern New Mexico. Final score is 48-31. New Mexico State falls to Georgia Southern here today at Aggie Memorial Stadium. NM State drops to two and six. Georgia Southern now six and one and they are bowl eligible in 2018. Aggie men's basketball right around the corner. Season tickets on sale now, just $210. Chris Jans, the head coach, and the Aggies coming off back-to-back 28-win campaigns. Call the Pan Am Center ticket office at 575-646-1420. Adam Young, Danny Need with you. Uh, glad you could join us here today. Great start for the Aggies, Danny, that third quarter was the big problem. It was a letdown, but you know, like we talked about, the offense coming on strong, defense, where are you? We need them, we need them to get back and rally, keep us in this thing. A lot of points on the board today. We'll take a look at our game highlights from this 48-31 final score in Las Cruces. Loved the first quarter, loved the start. The Aggies led 14 to three at one point, Danny. Coming out of the block strong, you know, we're just feeling, we're just scoring, doing everything we need to offensively to make this thing happen. 
Aggies got a five-yard touchdown run by Christian Gibson, then a nine-yard touchdown run by Jason Huntley. Then the running game for Georgia Southern really took over as Wesley Kennedy runs it in from 15 yards away. It was 14 to 10 Aggies after one quarter. Georgia Southern outscored the Aggies 14 to three in the second quarter. And this is when that triple option started really rolling for the Eagles. Yeah, I think when you start not being able to shut down that dive, it just opens the whole option up and it just really hurt us tonight. It was a 24-17 game at halftime, so it was a one possession game. Redshirt freshman Logan Wright had a couple of rushing touchdowns and have two. Monteo Garrett runs one in right there. And then there were some issues for the Yankees with turnovers, a couple of fumbles and interception, which is very uncharacteristic of Josh Atkins. Yeah, well, absolutely. But I think also he was trying to press. He was trying to get, to get us some points quickly, and that happens. Three rushing touchdowns today for Jason Huntley, who had a really good game again. There's a lot of positives to take from this one. The Aggies are putting up points at a very high rate right now. The defense just has to find a way to stop the They run. have to find a way to stop someone somehow, no doubt about it. But the offense is firing on all cylinders. They are putting points up. It is exciting. Now we just need the defense to get there. Time now for the Whataburger play of the game. Big day for Jason Huntley. And you have to think he'll be a part of it, which he is. It was a rushing touchdown of nine yards by Huntley in the first quarter. 14 to three Aggies at that point. I know you and I felt like, okay, maybe they may find a, find a way to squeak this one out today. Yeah, I thought for sure we'd, we'd find a way to stay in this thing to the end here and it just didn't happen. Let's take a look at final stats for this one here today. Some gaudy running numbers for Georgia Southern uh, in this game here this afternoon as they go for 389 on the ground. Now the Aggies go for 295 through the air, and it wasn't a huge difference in total yards, but man, 389 on the ground, uh, that's a lot. Yeah, we got to find a way. That's two games in a row that they've just been, the team's been able to put points on the board, and we haven't been able to stop them. We've got to figure out a way to do that. But you do see points on our side. You do see our offense coming together. We just got to fix that defensive side. Well, if you're still talking about bowl eligibility on the Aggies' side, they have to win their final four to be bowl eligible. But at this point, you're just looking for improvement week to week. Yeah, I think you're right. I think if you if you brought that up with Coach, that's exactly what he'd say. He's like, forget that. Let's just think about next week and how to dial up a stop on defense. The Aggies are at Texas State next Saturday. Short week for Georgia Southern. Big conference game against Appalachian State for them on Thursday. Join us for our next telecast on Saturday, November 3rd when Aggie football plays Alcorn State. Our coverage begins at 2 p.m. Tonight's broadcast day, co-production of students and staff at New Mexico State. For our entire crew, my partner Danny Nee, Adam Young thanking you for joining us. The Aggies drop this one to Georgia Southern. We say goodnight from Las Cruces.